Experience tranquility. Pass into the iris. Experience tranquility. Pass into the iris. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Iris Podcast. I'm your host, Bowsy. Joining me here today, we have two of the legendary Iris Podcast members, Mr. Yeti and Thuggington, on the desk with me. How are you two doing on this fine Monday evening? Great. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you, man. I was waiting for you. I wasn't sure who was going to go first. No, it's great. It's great to be back. It has, uh, it, it, in a way, it feels like old times again. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Thug and I started this bad boy here, God, about five years ago. <laughs> I don't like it, dude. I think it was, what, uh, second season, so 2019? uh 2018 actually the end of 2008 like half, yeah, second yeah, half yeah, of 2018 yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's been about five years um man dude that's so long ago that's <laughs> so long ago bowsy yeah <laughs> so it's, long it's ago. been so long i wasn't even here at that time i don't even think i was a competitive overwatch in that time so it's been a long time but you know what it all has resulted in what we have here today the iris podcast coming at you live with a new host this season obviously but Let's get the history lessons out of the way. Let's dive into our main programming. 
of course, last week was the second week of the playoffs. And, of course, a lot of different things happening. So let's recap all of that and look toward the third week with our first section of Amp It Up. Starting off with you, Mr. Yeti, what was your favorite moment from last week of Tranquility Gaming? You know, for me, it's just the amount of upsets from number one seeds. Kind of, You didn't see a lot of them coming. You know, some people had kind of predicted that maybe Deep Dish was on the way down, perhaps after dropping a couple of players, some roster shifting yeah. here and there. People may have looked at that team, saw them vulnerable to an upset, especially over a Joey esports team that had a lot of really strong performances in their in their pool stage. Um, Koala Kings over Flashbacks, kind of the same thing. I mean, Flashbacks yeah. at times have looked vulnerable, and Koala yeah. Kings at many times have looked very dominant, except for the fact that they just got 4 0'd by Flashbacks. But <laughs> nonetheless, that being said, Koala Kings, here they are, and they took yeah. care of business. And then last but not least, this is the upset that I think that I, I very few people probably saw coming. It was Narwhal Connects over uh, Galactic Penguins. Big. I, that's a massive upset, a crazy upset. I just uh, Galactic Penguins just did not quite have their A game in that one. But And Narwhal, I mean, Narwhal all season, it's been the story for them. They've taken right. advantage of every opportunity that's been given to them. And that's a big thing for teams of these playoff scenarios. You might not be the favorite coming in, but if they give you that window of opportunity to take – you can step right through it, and that's just what Narwhal did. And now Narwhal not only has booked their way into the winners' finals, they've also booked their way into the championship bracket already. And that is crazy. That is nobody expected that at the beginning no. of the season. No. So would you call that was that match like? Are Narwhal are they from the North Pole? Uh, Arctic like... Arctic Ocean, dude. Is, is right. this a pole? Is this a pole battle? I'd have to. I'd have to get. Uh, I'd Google, have to do some chat, research Google, on someone that. Google this. Someone, someone, someone Google it. Put in the chat if that's the Please case. Please put it in there. Our narwhal from the North Pole because penguins are on the South Pole. It's true. It's true. Mm, this the year. battle of the poles goes to the North Pole. Santa reigns supreme yet again. <laughs> he does. Uh, dude. So, uh, but yeah, it was hell. It was a crazy week. Crazy week, and number one's going down. Yeah, especially sure. especially with that Narwhal Connects, you wouldn't expect a team who that won four matches in the regular season to move on to the championship bracket, but Narwhal right. Connects, here they are, being able to make it work in the end. Got to win when it counts, man. If you, win, if you win when it counts, that's all that matters. Stuggington, what was your favorite moment from last week? Okay, so I'm watching. Owl Grand Finals, Dallas Fuel doing the Dallas Fuel thing. And I don't know if if that buff got transferred onto the Burn Blue org here, but both F972 getting an upset win and uh, was it F Fahrenheit 214? Two, two, Correct. 214. Two, two two Either way. Um, both getting big upset wins. No one expects them to be where they are. I'm sure they expect them in the, in the lower bracket to make some runs, but both of those teams got really clutch wins in upset snare like it kind of echoing what yeti said there's a big upset week and there was some wild stuff and a lot of brackets got busted as you will definitely find out you definitely later in the podcast. Yeah. you will definitely find out about all those brackets that got busted fahrenheit heating up at the right time my uh, favorite moment is that we're seeing a lot of lower bracket runs but i want to highlight last year's champions cosmic castaways making a giant mm -hmm. lower bracket run yep. the question yes. is how long are they going to be sailing for they've already taken down two formidable opponents they right. could maybe make championship bracket if they're able to keep that momentum going. So we'll see if they're able to do that. But now heading into our third week of the playoffs, what are you most looking forward to as we enter into this third week? Starting off with you, Yeti. So there's two matches that I'm particularly looking at this week. They're both big rematches with different stakes. I'm going to talk about first in the uh, Harmony NA flashbacks taking on Strix. Harmony's here, preseason finals, flashbacks taking on Strix, flashbacks take that dub. Here's the thing. Ever since then, these teams have kind of gone down different paths. Mm -hmm. We saw Strix kind of, they had a relatively good stage one. They kind of limped their way into the A group a little bit. Right. And then after they got into the A group, it just kind of went a little bit pear-shaped for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but since then, they've come through. They've pulled off a, a couple of, you know, decent wins right now and uh you know they're in the they're in this position in the in the lower bracket where you think hey maybe Strix can make a run and then all of a sudden guess who shows up big daddy flashbacks i mean mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for Strix. they've gone down twice to flashbacks already in the preseason this season i look to them to see maybe if they can bounce back and come out with a third uh on this third maybe third time to charm yeah you know i don't know it's gonna be a tough match for them but We'll see what happens for Strix. I mean, there's a lot of potential here uh, if they can pull a rabbit out of a hat uh, and uh, take this one. And then the other match I'm really, look, really, really excited about, it's in the Discord tier EU. It's their semifinal matchup. 
Death Watch taking on Mythical Kitsune. Mm -hmm. Death Watch lost their first match this season in the postseason against Mythical Kitsune, three to two. So this is an opportunity now for Kitsune to prove that wasn't a fluke, and it's up to Death Watch now to prove that their regular season wasn't a fluke. They both are looking for a date with Beaters United in the finals. So Death Watch has a big opportunity right now to make a statement, come back, and show that that first round against Mythical Kitsune shouldn't have happened. We'll definitely see if those two rematches are going to live up to their names. Definitely will be interesting to see. Thuggington, what about your uh, – what are you most looking forward to entering our third week of the playoffs? Yeah, so mine's um... – Mine's way more boring because <laughs> when I'm looking at, at playoff tranquility and one of my favorite things about the playoff is you have these winner go home scenarios. It there's it's high stakes, it's really good energy. Everyone's giving their all. Like when people get them with matches, they're like, oh crap, there's a map five. Everyone check out this stream. And that stream blows up with like 50 to 75 people and everyone's tuned in. They're on their edge of their seat. And that only happens in like lower bracket stuff because everyone's fighting for their life. So it's every single lower bracket match and maybe that's just copium because flashbacks are there right now but mm -hmm. it's probably just more fun uh right. no but i love lower mac a lower lower bracket matchups i love that energy i mean it's the same energy you get in championship brackets where you know people in the upper bracket if they lose like well i got another chance it, it doesn't feel as hard and i can say that from experience you kind of like give yourself an excuse but mm -hmm. oh man these lower bracket matches are gonna be an absolute banger i'm yes. jacked for it Lower bracket definitely is tend itself to a lot of interesting matches. We'll see if that lives up. My my one I'm look, most looking forward to next uh, this week actually happens next week. I'm only saying it because I don't know if we're having a podcast episode yet, which Yeti is now confirming. No, so good to know. Uh, thank you, Yeti, for confirming that live on the air. But my my what I'm most looking forward to is the Harmony EU finals happening next Tuesday between Acer and uh, Brig Divers. Noted. Brig Divers' first loss of the season came to Acer, and that cost them the number one seed in the tournament. So there's a lot of potential coming out here for both of these uh, for both of these teams, and we'll see if it's able to make uh, we'll see if it produces an interesting finals. Quick note before we head into our next section, I see some giveaway entries. The giveaway entries <laughs> will be doing. Please get in your giveaway entries for that free T-shirt from our store. I'll be petitioning our well, I want a t-shirt so bad <laughs> and I would love to have a t-shirt yeah. I, I, I just don't know if like I could... one of these Bro, yeah I want one it's 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 crazy like I could get t-shirts like this but it, the crazy thing is like if I don't win this giveaway I can never get a t-shirt like how can I get a t-shirt well, I don't know how to get a t-shirt like well, Bowsy, a... what do I do you can go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash tranquility gg or type exclamation point store in the chat to see Wait, if one you more can... time you can type exclamation point store in the chat. Our resident NPC and also Mr. Yeti are there to spread the link so that you can go over to our store and buy oh. any shirts from any past seasons of Tranquility and current ones. Yeti has one from Dumpster Divers back in Season 5. I have Big Bang Buccaneers, which are a team right now in Season 9. So That's you wild. Holy, holy Narwhal Connects, I can just say that. My gosh. So... This is why Wait, I was so, do I have to get? I don't have. I can do it from any season. Yeah, any season. And there's a, there's not just shirts. There's sweatshirts. There's hats. There's mugs. Can I get a mug? There is mugs. There are mugs. Man, I'm That's losing crazy. It. I'm losing I just, it. But I wish I could get a sticker to put somewhere. Like I have this really cool wall. I want to put a sticker on it too. Oh, don't yeah. worry. There are stickers as well, Yeti. Oh wow. There's wow. There, there's plenty wow. there, and the only way you can check out what you want and see if they ha if they have what you want is going to shop.spreadshirt.com/tranquilitygg. But enough <sighs> stalling. <laughs> Thuggyton, Thuggyton mentioned it earlier. Let's get to some busted brackets. Of course, ah, the busted bracketology review is back for a second week, <laughs> and we're going to be breaking down every single match that happened in this last week. Uh, if I got him correctly, uh, put into the uh, thing. Which spoiler alert, I didn't. Uh, so I'm going to be able to get those really quickly. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm, this is pretty much going to be editing as time goes on. But we're going to start off in the Harmony EU tier. Uh, Thuggington, guide us through the Harmony EU bracket, as you or the matches that happened in Harmony EU, and how our analysts did on Bracketology. Yes, so starting off, we had number one ACL, which was a really fun word to say. Uh, going against number four, Hope Guardians. That went that was a really close on a 4-3 victory for ACL. Um, Bowsy was bad. Um, I know. Spoiler alert. Uh, he predicted that went opposite, like a dummy. 
Mm -hmm. um, but Nerf, Navino, and Magpul are both uh, had this one right. It was much closer than anyone anticipated, I think, on either side. Um, so really, really great match there. Brig Divers 4-0, Dino Nuggies. That was pretty much uh, a clean across the board with Magpolar flipping it. Um, but Bowsy nerfed and Navino all guessing that one correctly, but they guessed a little bit closer than anticipated. So the Harmony EU bracket is going just about as anticipated. The number one seed v the number two seed. And this will be a match of the ages. Be yep. exciting. It definitely will be a match of the ages. We'll see which team is able to come out on top between Acer and Brig Divers. But there is your Harmony EU bracket. All, all That is your Harmony EU busted bracketology report. Now let's move over to the upper bracket for Harmony NA. Now that I actually have everything set up. Yes, Sir Yeti, let's go into the upper bracket for Harmony NA. So Harmony NA itself, I mean, let's face it. Okay, start. let's start with uh, the number one seeds. Okay, y y none of you got them. Okay, no. the only one who... The, who really, really? I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. I should rephrase. I was reading Kusanagi versus M F F nine seven two. I'm very prepared. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the flashbacks was qualifying again. We talked about that upset. We kind of mm -hmm. saw some people could see that coming. Bowsy, <clears throat> you predicted it because you hate nostalgia. I know this. That's but true. Navino, <laughs> Navino picked it because it's Navino picking a marsupial theme. So of course he did. Um, but the other two, the people who aren't clouded with horrific bias. Went with flashbacks 3-0. Now that was no, I'm just kidding. Anyways, but that one, uh, uh, I think that one was 50-50. I, I kind of again not surprised by that, but the big one is obviously Narwhal versus Galactic Penguins. Nobody saw Narwhal even beating Ace High, let alone Galactic Penguins. No. Uh, Real. But I will, that I will say, we've been shocked all the way through that Big Bang versus Geometric result. That is a, a pretty match. That's right a really there. clean. Good job, That's everybody. Really, really clean. And shout out to Nerfed as well, picking F nine seven two going as far as they did that's a great pick nerfed good job hey nerfed if you uh had a script of any sort um please let me know who you got it from yeah please i i mean <laughs> i hope that the script nerfed has isn't correct because they had doodles as the champion in discord here in a and i don't want to talk about that but still uh definitely we'll talk about that later we'll yeah, talk about that later. maybe later. later yeah but uh, definitely the big bang buccaneers versus geometric match is the only match all four of our analysts got perfect this week so wild and I'm pretty sure that's the second match all time that all our analysts got perfect. So it shows you that's how right. up in the air all of this is. Speaking of up in the air, the lower brackets are up in the air. Thuggington, got us through the Harmony NA lower bracket. Well, first off, you're not giving me much. First, let's look at this, this Ace High versus Chrysalis match. Hap, look at, look at Bowsy. Bowsy, let's talk about this. I want to have a little conversation about your bracket specifically. You're making it really hard to analyze when you get nothing right, man. <laughs> like, I at, know look at your bracket. Look at your Strix versus FBRD, and your bro. Hey, you nailed the Freya other one. Um, so again, yeah, exactly. True. <laughs> I'll start with the bottom again. No one pictured Narwhal connects to be there, so obviously everyone picking them to win is just straight wrong. I will give you that you picked the loser of that match to beat Chrysalis. Half point. Chat, you agree? Half point? Okay. <laughs> um, aimbots and CDs. Aimbots take this one again. Navino and Magpolar, everyone kind of flipped it, but Bowsy and Nerfed are huge brained. We have the Ragnarok Freya Clairvoyance match, a 3 2, another, another close and absolute wonderful tranquility matchup. Uh, half the analysts got it right, half got it wrong because that's what exists. Um, and, and that top one, Nerfed is absolutely giant brained picking this one. I, I think that. Nerf sees everything very clearly. Um, it feels like the person that hosted Tranquility, predicting Tranquility all season long, may or may not have a script. Hmm. Nerfed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, just, you know. The, look, it's, it's what's it, up. <laughs> it's honestly surprising <laughs> that this is the first time I think the predicting Tranquility host has done this well in the playoffs. So this is a it's little true. concerning, but... Is that a shot on you? I think, it's a shot on, I think it's a shot on me mostly, but because <laughs> I've got, I mean, to be fair, I'm not the worst person in this. We'll get to, as you can tell, just by the lower bracket there, it's a lot of red on Magpolar's side. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot yeah. more of that as the season goes on. Okay, but that's <laughs> Polar. I mean, come on. Yeah, like, I mean, okay, you're... to be fair, Polar. They don't call him Mag Predicts. I'm just saying. <laughs> Like, there's a reason for that. Fair. Speaking My of a God. lot of red, uh, Mr. Yeti, Discord's here. You has uh, quite a lot of red. 
Yeah, y'all sucked at this one, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, for what it's worth, that all comes down to the whole Death Watch thing. Like, nobody expected Death Watch to, to go down to Mythical Kitsune early. No. I mean, and another thing worth mentioning is Cam. Like, Cam made an impressive run this postseason. Like, mm. they c- come up b- big with two huge wins uh, over both Feeders Divided and over uh, Paid to Win to get to where they did. I mean, you got to right. give credit where credit's due to Cam. They came in as the sixth seed. Honestly, not a lot of expectations for them. They came in. Did a great job. So Cam, uh, and not the Cam on, uh, not the Cam on Guangzhou. That Cam's great, but not not that Cam. Um, but I mean, you got to give credit to Cam. But I mean, it just says something about Death Watch right now. We're we're getting to that final that uh, where Death Watch. A lot of us had predicted Death Watch to get there. As a Death Watch, despite losing in round one to Mythical Kitsune, is now getting back to where they can get back in line to take on mythical kitsune again it's just the storylines are very interesting it's just that the brackets are all terrible yeah death watch have not lost a map since losing to mythical kitsune we'll see if they're able to keep that up as next week they're less red than this match here but let's move over mm-hmm. now to discord north america thuggington let's start with the upper bracket okay so this is a, a number one seed that didn't lose reminiscence and i'm surprised they didn't um Okay, well, not really. If you look at look at where they are right now, Reminiscence is one of those teams that I'm a little suspicious of. Um, let me just look at it. Just saying. Maybe you should just take a little closer look than you do right now. Um, so Reminiscence, when that one, everyone predicted that one to happen. This is about happened about as as much as I as much as I expected it to. Again, and then the Galactic Gibbons, a clean sweep. Great job, predictors. You guys nailing you're nailing this one. Um, and this is where it goes pear shaped. Everybody nerf, nerfed again. Nerfed and Navino both uh, predicted Joey Esports. Oh, shock. Wait, timeout. Timeout. Yeah. Navino. Guy, like, <laughs> make it less obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's super hard when, like, it's only biased if he's wrong. That's right? true. And he's, That's true. Just saying. I'm just saying. Um, again, MI7, <laughs> the doodles. Uh, most people predicted that one. Nerfed d- definitely had this one wrong. And as Bowsy alluded to, we're going to be making fun of Nerfed a lot over this one because Nerfed had Doodles winning. And that was plain stupid. To be fair, Doodles destroyed yeah. all of our brackets last season in Harmony Tier. So I could see where the mad where the mad uh where the mad doctor nerf came from by predicting doodles to win to make it through, but No, I get it. I get it. It's doodles. It's doodles. It's like, doodles. Like roll a die. That's a doodles match. <laughs> it's doodles. It's doodles, Thug. It's doodles. <laughs> no man. Just but, saying. Okay, you you, Nobody expected Doodles to win the championship last season. Nope. Just saying. Except two people on the bracket challenge, but that's it. And I'm pretty sure right. both of those they players were, were Doodles, doodles players. players. Exactly. Yeah, fair, 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 fair. So, all right. With that out of the way, now let's move over to the lower bracket. Yeti got us through this bracket. I, I honestly, you, you're doing pretty good, guys. I will say nerfed again, getting that uh, – uh, getting that cosmic castaway pick to get this far, huge credit to them on that one. Uh, honestly, you know, with a lot of people expected Avalon to be there and not Hammerhead, I do wonder if that prediction would have been different if Hammerhead, if it was Hammerhead versus Cosmic Castaway for Nerf, or if they would have stuck Maybe. with that three two. It's worth mentioning there because I feel sure. like Hammerhead came in with a slightly better resume going into stage two than Avalon. But that being said. Credit to Cosmic Castaways. They got the job done, pulled off the big dub over... Uh, yeah, exactly. Now you admit it. Uh, <laughs> credit to Cosmic Castaways, pulling off the big dub, kind of rallying back after a really disappointing season. Um, you know, Redacted, great pick from everybody there, obviously Redacted. Uh, a lot of people predicted them to make a run out of the lower bracket as well. Adelaide Eclipse. Uh, I'm a little surprised because Loki was the third seed. They were the top in their B group. Adelaide got beat. I, I just, I don't, I didn't. I was a little surprised to see everybody jumping on the Adelaide bandwagon. They were correct, but I was a little surprised to see it other than Polar. But we've talked about Polar's brackets. I've never met somebody so wrong. I just, I haven't met anybody this wrong in a very long time. Like, it's embarrassing. It's pretty bad. Like, I mean, Polar, Polar, great coach. Great coach. Does he know this isn't golf? Questionable predictor. Like, higher Um, score is better exactly exactly mm-hmm. uh and then obviously the last match there i think a lot of people expected hades to have a better run uh than they did but uh 
here we are. Uh, but credit to Polar for at least predicting F fourteen to get there. Uh, yeah, I don't know but anymore. <laughs> lower bracket's a bit of a mess right now, other than redacted. Yeah, I don't know. So. We're not really up to uh, moral victories here anymore. Nah, we're past moral victories. Let's uh, be we're real. Past that. Yeah, let's let's be real. We're we're past moral victories. But yeah, a lot of interesting yeah. stuff in lower bracket. Uh, <laughs> That, let me tell you, I'll get into I'll get into stuff after the transcendence tier. Which speaking of the transcendence tier, Thug, let's talk about Hi. the upper bracket and transcendence tier. I would absolutely love to. Um, again, every every one of the uh, analysts picked D caps over Amnesia one over five makes sense, except everybody at the same time one two three polar <laughs> polar. No. What does mean, honey kid? Um, <laughs> this is okay, this one blew my mind. We have Devil Deuce three zero over the Guangzhou Gangsters, and the one person that wasn't biased, Navino, like of ev every other match you picked your squad every time, and the one time you didn't pick it, like are you just trying to like keep us on our toes a little bit? He said he has faith in his teams in the chat. Apparently, not enough faith though. Not no, enough faith. Not enough faith. Navino, not just enough. like not whatever, dude. Faith. I'm, I'm looking. Listen, benefit of the doubt. If you're gonna be biased, just lean hard. Just like whole body weight. <laughs> whole body. Just like yeah. just like I it. do with that team on top. Just saying. Just saying. True. True. Lean, lean hard into your biases. Unapologetic. 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 I like I like how True Dongers in the chat saying that they aren't in the Vino team yet. The Vino is on your team, so take that as you will. Okay, listen, we're no, not true, in the Vino team. On, true's on, true's Marcus, on Guangzhou. True's on you're, Guangzhou. You're in the Vino. I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. You can't, okay. you can't yeah. run from no. that. No, Guangzhou is not a Navino team. Sorry, I thought I thought I thought True was on Devil Dukes. My bad. No. Uh, oh no, I said the cursed name. Oh no, hopefully OBS. Oh no, name. you did. You did. Oh god. Oh no. No, oh, seriously, it Navino is inevitable. Yeah, Navino is inevitable. In insert Navino standing in the dark hallway, backlit. Yeah. I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. I, I am surprised a little bit that I was able to get the Devil Dukes match right. I'm more surprised that I got the score wrong, and that Guangzhou did not take a single map. Uh that I think good, is the I'll biggest. Good shot. on you, Bowsy. Good. I'm proud of you. Yeah, good job, Bowsy. If I, no one else is proud of you, I am. <laughs> it's good to know someone's there. But no. It's, uh. <laughs> all right. Regardless of which, uh, there's one more bracket to go over. Mister Yeti, bring us through the transcendence lower bracket. So uh, this one is kind of going. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit off the rails right now. We're seeing a lot of red scores yeah, in there. Yeah, a lot of red. A lot of red scores. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people expected Reckless Sigma to come up over Billings Boomers, except for again. Uh, oh. But uh, and then, well, no, Navino. Uh, oh, and man. then on the top there as well, Frost Fisher did get a forfeit win over Culture. Uh, Arctic Fox is also with the forfeit win over uh, Sydney, which again nobody expected. Um, but you know. Sydney forfeited, so there you go. Uh, the one thing that's worth mentioning here, death cards. Nobody saw the death card run coming. They looked, just to be frank, they looked kind of bad in stage one. Oh. They looked like they needed. They looked like they needed somebody like me on the team. You know, an all star, transcendence tier, undefeated DPS player to kind of step in and show them how it's done. But you know, especially over Orsted because Orsted was watched. I was just um, gonna say, doesn't that kid play Brig? It's true. Sure, or set plays bring it. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, credit to Death Cards. They they pulled the they pulled the rabbit out of the hat. Not only beating Krabby Crabbers, uh, but a heavily favored classified team. Uh, and winning that three one, they now have an opportunity against Arctic Foxes, and they take that one. Uh, they'll be staring at, uh, I believe Guangzhou for a shot at the uh, at Chim Championship bracket. So we'll see what happens with Death Cards, but. Uh, Kudos to them for pulling off a great run, but for all the predictors, shame on you for not believing in death cards. Shame. I can, I can check on that real quick. I'm pretty sure they're facing Amnesia actually for that spot in the. Oh, then place. it's a, then it's a lock for death cards. <laughs> the, the death cards trying to pull off the battalion from last season. We'll see mm -hmm. if they're able to do exactly that. But definitely a lot of interesting matches in the lower bracket. Now I do not have a slide for this unfortunately because I wasn't prepared, but uh, I also have been keeping score of all of these. Mm -hmm. because i have to uh, and mm -hmm. i am happy to report that currently met or not really happy to report magpolar currently is in last i'm in third and there's a tie for first between nerfed and navino in terms of the points totals for these so take that as you will i'll probably be showing off the standings in the next week of the busted bracketology report but 
That is all for the Busted Bracketology Report. Now, before we head into the main event of our show, we have our weekly montage. This one was edited by Twist. Thank you, Twist, for the weekly montage. Just don't die until you're dead. I really was just about to kill you. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you again, Twist, for that amazing montage. And now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm so excited. I am so excited. We are all so excited as today is the day. It's time for our end of season awards ceremony. Of course, a committee that we hire and we've called for numerous times in our Tranquility Gaming Discord <laughs> helped decide. <coughs> Excuse me. Dying a little bit. Uh, that community helped us decide the winners for the, uh, role, obviously, the nominees, and also helped us decide our winners for each category, as well as our role stars. We're going to start off in the Harmony Tier EU. For each category, there are two role stars and one winner. So you'll probably so it's a 50 percent chance you'll guess which one is the is the winner of it but still you'll be able to see who the role <laughs> stars are if you, if you're if you want to guess to be honest that's obviously the case but regardless let's go into our role stars starting off with the main tank category your harmony tier eu main tank role stars are narrow from the hope guardians and karama from i know nuggies your winner for the rolls your winner for best main tank in the season. I have it on the wrong slide. Why do I have it on the wrong slide? I'm gonna blame uh I'm gonna blame who was on screen there. I'll get it to you in a <laughs> second here, don't worry. Um I'll just sit in the wrong direction. But there are your roll stars. You can probably take a guess on who it is while they try to figure this out. Oh, almost that's... done, almost done, almost done, almost done. There we go. Your roll star for your best main tank is Nero from Hope Guardians. Congratulations, Nero, for winning the end of season awards mr yeti your thoughts on this winner i mean nero has been a harmony eu favorite for a very long time they've looked outstanding all season um i mean last season they shined on an a10 esports team that uh honestly is a uh you know that struggled last season this season hope guardians looked really great during the regular season kind of struggled a little bit off as uh, things went on uh, a little bit later on uh, but credit to narrow they've been a, a bastion of consistency for that team and um, obviously an outstanding main tank the reinhardt is ferocious uh huge credit by the way i know a lot of people in the chat are talking about the graphics huge credit to glitch uh these graphics are incredible thank you so much for putting together all of our award or all of our best of award graphics which are going out on twitter throughout the night tonight as well so uh those will be available for you you feel free to re retweet them show your friends tell them how cool you are for winning awards and stuff yeah definitely thank you glitch for our best for our best winners for each category so definitely definitely a good thing to see but that is 
the first, but that is only the first. There are many more to go, and we're going to move on now to the best off-tank. Your best off-tank roll stars in Harmony EU are Silas from Aesir and The Table from Brig Divers, and your best off-tank in the tier is The Table from uh, Brig Divers. Thuggington, your thoughts on the winner for best off-tank? You know, Brig Divers have been a top team all of Tranquility for a long time. It was really Brig Divers and everybody else before the pack kind of narrowed up. And a big reason was the table. Um, this is a, a person on that team that was uh, ab absolutely pivotal to to carrying that roster, holding that roster up kind of like a, uh, what 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 is that like, Yeti? Someone that holds something up, like you put stuff on it. You can put stuff on it. Um, it? Oh, oh, like, a, um, oh God, uh, like a tray, like a tray. Like, like, a, like a Davenport? Yes, yes. I'll, it'll come back to me. Anyway, right. the table. Uh, uh, yeah, a chase, a chase. Ooh, a sh ooh, yes. a chase. Yes. Those are really fancy. Yeah, really anyway, fancy. the table <laughs> was a big part of the reason that Brig Divers yes. is where they are right now and a big reason that mm -hmm. they may win the Harmony U Championship. When is that match coming up, by the next, way? Uh, next that is Tuesday. coming up. Oh, next, next, Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday, the 22nd. It's going to be a banger, guys. You're not going to want to miss it. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, yes, congratulations. Yeah, mm -hmm. congratulations, yeah. the table. Definitely strong performance with this team, with Brick Divers this season. Definitely making mm -hmm. a lot work there. But now let's move over now to the hit scan DPS role, of course. It's all about clicking heads when it comes to tranquility. And obviously, hit scan DPS, a very crucial part in that process. Your role stars for Harmony EU hit scan DPS are Darkson from Hope Guardians and Mate 0210 2003 from the Dino Nuggies. Say that five times fast. And oh, nope. your winner. No, thanks. No. No I thanks. won't. I won't. I will. I will not force you. <laughs> I won't do but that. But your best, your best hit scan DPS for Harmony Tier U is Darkson from the Hope Guardians. Mister Yeti, your thoughts on your best hit scan winner? I think for a lot of people, this is a little bit of an upset because Mateo was very strong last season and also won this very award last season as well. So it's worth mentioning. I mean, a huge shout to Mateo. This vote was very close. Darkson, though, has been outstanding this season. They were a late add last season to A10 Esports. This season, jumping in to that Hope Guardian spot, very strong all season, especially on the Cassidy. Their Cassidy was an absolute menace, especially during Overwatch 1. Uh, it has been a uh, they have been a huge part of why the Hope Guardian saw so much success leading up to the playoffs here. I'm a huge fan of Darkson. Uh, it's a shame that we didn't get to see Hope Guardians push to the finals. Uh, but honestly, uh, considering the team uh, that they went up against here, you can't necessarily hold it against them too hard. Uh, they did have that as ex absolutely incredible map seven banger against Acer this week. Uh, so. Tough to say, but at the same time, congratulations, Darkson. Uh, well deserved. Definitely, Darkson, a strong, a strong caliber player for Hope Guardians this season. I touted them as a really good hit scan DPS, and they have showed up when it mattered the most here. So, congratulations, Darkson, for winning best uh, hit scan DPS. Let's move now over to the other DPS player, the projectile DPS. Of course, it's not just about clicking heads; it's also about shooting rockets or shurikens or anything in between. Your your best projectile, D your <laughs> I try to come I, up with jokes. Sometimes they fall dude, flat. You're, you're, not, that you're not wrong. That's <laughs> the, good. All of those things are true. That was good. I was impressed. Bro. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that being said, your role stars for projectile DPS in Harmony EU are Dragon from Aesir and Shinbo from the Hope Guardians. Your winner for best projectile DPS in the tier is Dragon from Aesir. Thuggington, your thoughts on this winner? Yeah, again, like like you said, it's not always about clicking heads. It's about doing literally everything else. Um, Dragon Train talked extensively about it when we kind of brought these out. That was Train's favorite going into this, uh, and he he was dead right. Dragon's been a really pr pivotal part of Aesir's run here, being the number one seed. A lot of it comes down to DPS play, and in this Overwatch two in this meta, it's about what DPS player can pop off early. You know, playing the Genji, and Dragon's been doing that. Dragon came roaring. No. onto the scene and Bowsy's really, funnier Sorry. and really has lit up this competition with their play thank you i'm just gonna say just a huge credit really quick to dragon from Aesir. uh Aesir, stage one not great stage no. two overwatch two hits fantastic they look great they beat brig divers now they're in the finals against that same brig divers team dragon a huge part of that congrats dragon yeah, Dragon definitely strong performance in Overwatch 2, helping carry Acer to 
a lot of big victories. Now let's move over to the back line now, starting off with the flex support. Uh, one specialist here on our desk can tell you all about that flex support experience, but we're not going to be talking about him first. Let's talk about the Harmony EU ones. Our roll stars for Harmony EU flex support are Skyflower from Dino Nuggies and Norak from the Hope Guardians. And your winner for best flex support in the tier is Skyflower from Dino Nuggies. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on the winner? I mean, Skyflower has been outstanding for two seasons here in Tranquility. Last season with the Venice Vipers, that championship team, uh, the MVP last season as well. This season, I think a little bit perhaps of a step back necessarily uh, for her with regards to a performance level. But at the same time, that being said, still does an outstanding flex support all season. Really stepped up this uh, on a lot of things in Tranquility, being a moderator this season as well. Uh, so they've done they've been right. quite busy dealing with that. Also helping run uh, at Dino Nuggies, of course, obviously been a big part of that as well. So uh, credit to Skyflower, ba balancing all of those responsibilities Ooh. and still being an incredible uh, flex board as well. So you got to give credit to her where it's due. They definitely blossomed this season overall, being able to handle all of that and still put up a MVP God, you're caliber me performance. About God damn it. <laughs> God, good. He's really good. God, you're good. I, tr I, tr I, I learned from some of the best, so I try as much as I can. Let's move over now to the other back line. Okay, fair Yeti. Let's move over now to the <laughs> other side of the back line now, the main support category. It's not always about the flex supports. It's about your Lucios, your Mercies, your Moiras? I don't know. Maybe something like sure. that. Depends. Depends on the composition. Riggs. Brigida, Riggs. Yeah, Brigida more. <laughs> more so Brigida. With that out of the way, uh, let's go over to our Roll Stars for best main support in Harmony Tier EU. Your Roll Stars are Choanoi from the Brig Divers, ironically, and Blondie from Hope Guardians. And your winner for best main support in the tier is Blondie from the Hope Guardians. Congratulations, Blondie. Thuggington, your thoughts on the winner? Yeah, so same thing. Yeti kind of echoed this too, and I feel like we're talking about every single Hope Guardians player, an A10 esports player last season, kind of transitioning into a position on Hope Guardians and a really big part of this team. Uh, main support players a lot of times are the unsung heroes. They they rarely pop off unless they get a giant boop, um, but they're the consistent members of their team, and Blondie has been that. Blondie's been a, a pivotal part of the success of both of these teams, seeing a lot of growth within the tr community, in terms of SR and in terms of gameplay overall. So congratulations to Blondie. Really big, really big success story and a good good showing for everybody else is how you can transition through tranquility. So <laughs> nice. It, yeah. it takes a good it takes a good Lucio player to enable an insane Reinhardt. So yes, based real. Yeah. yeah. Just saying. So a, a Reinhardt is never without their support. And that is the case. It used to be the case where a Reinhardt's never good without a good off tank partner, but now it's the support because there's only one tank and Blondie has definitely stepped up to the task, helping narrow out in those situations. Now, of course, it's not just all about the specific roles. We also have one that is dedicated to the players that have improved the most, be it through this season of tranquility, throughout their career, through multiple seasons of tranquility, etc. Our Roll Stars for Most Improved in Harmony Tier EU are Silas from Aesir and uh, Kip from Celsius522. And your winner for for Most Improved in the Tier is Kip from Celsius522. Who did I ask? The Yeti? I think Thuggington is next in terms of asking. No, or no, it's, 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 it's Yeti. It's, it's Yeti. It's Yeti. Yeti, your thoughts on the winner. So for Kip, I think see, Celsius had a hard season. Let's just be straight. Let's just be real about it's it. Real. It's, it's You're a tough real. season. You're a real it guy. was a very tough season for for Kip uh, and, and that team. But what it comes down to is it's a team who needed to consistently get better. Uh, they were. Yep pretty much always on the bottom, but they never seemed to really be out of any of the matches they were in. They were always just kind of lingering there, just kind of hanging around some close maps, hanging around all the time. They were like, you know, really challenging to actually beat down there, but much like the fuel in most Overwatch seasons. No, but it genuinely, <laughs> genuinely, Kip stepped up throughout the season, had to step up with the loss of some of their DPS players uh, and some of their players they had dealt with and the roster turnover they dealt with, uh, trying to keep uh, Celsius relevant. And I feel like Kip did a really good job uh, in stepping into kind of a leadership role for the team. Right. 
Yeah, definitely Kip has been able to improve throughout the entire season. It'll be exciting to see what they are able to accomplish next season if they return to Tranquility. Congratulations, Kip, for winning Most Improved in Harmony EU. Let's wrap up Harmony EU here with our final category, which, of course, it's not just about the players. It's about the staff behind it. And that sure. is where we go to our category for Best Coach in the tier, the person behind everything that the team may be going through, whether it be improving on certain compositions or learning certain compositions. Your nominees for be your, or your winners for Roll Stars in Best Coach Harmony Tier EU are Wanglin from the Break Divers and Agent Thoms from Hope Guardians. And your winner for Best Coach in the tier is Agent Thoms from the Hope Guardians. Thuggington, your thoughts on the winner of Best Coach. You know, there's a reason that Hope Guardians progressed to where they were, and a lot of that has to do with coaching. And and good coaches are able to get most out of their players. Um, it's not always who has the highest SR. It's not always who has the highest average. You know, Hope Guardians sat 125, 130 SR below the cap for most of the season. And it's about getting the most out of the team you have. And a team that sticks together, um, doesn't have a lot of roster transactions. It's a, it's a really tight, cohesive team. And a lot of that has to do with coaching and putting the right people in the right places. So congratulations to Agent... Is it Thoms? I can't tell if it's Agent Thoms or Agent Toms. E pronunciation sometimes throw me off, so... You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to lean into Thoms because it's fun for me and it's fun <laughs> for you. There you um, go. But I, great I, job, again, echoing a lot of Eddie said... Uh, Eddie. Yeah, Eddie. <laughs> um, his name isn't even Eddie. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> that's the weird thing. Yeah. Like, it's just... Um, you. It's the staff behind it, and, and Bowsy echoed that as well. So, nice job. Yeah, definitely. The coach is the most important part, in my opinion, of a composition to determine if a team can succeed or not. And Agent Thoms lived up to the task. Hope Guardians, I mentioned, they were the 10th seed last season in Harmony Tier U. This season, they were the, they were far better than that in terms of their performance. They were taking on a lot of top teams and had a potential to go really far in the tournament. So you got to give a lot of credit to Agent Thoms helping out the team there. Congratulations, Agent Thoms, for winning the best coach in, Har in Harmony Tier EU. Now, time to head back across the pond. It's time for Harmony NA. There are four role stars per category, which means there's a lot harder guessing in terms of if you want to try to figure out who is the best in a category. Let's start off with main tank, of course, the frontline person in Overwatch 1, the only person in the frontline in Overwatch 2. Your role stars for main tank in Harmony Tier North America are Chobi from the Galactic Penguins, Pasty from Flashbacks, Thomas from Koala Kings, and Classy Crew from Norwalk Connects. And your winner for best main tank in the tier is Chobi from the Galactic Penguins. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on the winner? So I will say this vote was extraordinarily close. It came down to one point separating Chobi and Pasty here. Basically, the two of them split the first and second place votes the whole way through all the balloting processes. They were pretty much rated as the top two by everybody, and there's a reason for that. They've both been fantastic this season. Obviously, Pasty, huge credit for getting that role star. But Chobi's been dominant this season. A uh, big part of why Galactic Penguins has had the success they've had so far. Chobi's such a strong player for that Galactic Penguins team that they end up putting Chobi in on DPS just to make sure that his leadership presence is in on that team when they push into Overwatch 2, when they have that smaller pool of players to pick from for the uh, for the for each, in, each individual map. So True. Chobi, well-deserved. Congratulations. Everybody in the chat is chobing right now for a very... Oh, everybody. <laughs> Everybody's chobing. Everybody is chobing. Congratulations, Chobi. It's true. It's Chobi. true. Chobi. We are, we are all chobing on this blessed day. It's honestly surprising because, like, we think about Chobi entering Tranquility, and now we think about Chobi now and how much they've improved since, since their first season. And honestly... It's really amazing to see how how well they progressed. And now winning best main tank, I think, is say that they are peaking right now in Harmony tier. So congratulations to Chobi. But it's not all about the main tanks. You know, it's, always, it's also about those off-tank picks that are helping those main tanks in Overwatch 1 or being the backup helping you play Zarya in Overwatch 2. Your best, your role stars for off-tank in Harmony tier in North America are Apathy from the Galactic Penguins, Kiddo from Flashbacks, T-Fast from the Koala Kings, and TIE Fighter from Ace High. And your winner for Best Off-Tank in Harmony Tier North America is Kiddo from the Flashbacks. So, Thuggington, 
Say what you must about your teammates. <laughs> Ball. <laughs> Dip. Ball. <laughs> no, kiddo. <laughs> Kiddo's been a really fun uh, teammate this season and uh, really done a lot for the team in terms of consistency. And I think when you come through off-tank players, you look for consistency. And Kiddo's always played at a very high, consistent level. Next level comms, comms like nobody I've ever met. Um, a lot of times we have to tune him down because he just won't shut the hell up. Uh, that's probably his only downfall as a teammate. Dude is a motor mouth. But beyond that, gifted ball player, below average everything else. If you if you want to get a good idea about Kiddo in Overwatch 2, just go look at their career profile and, and look at their tank hours played in comp this season. And prepare... <laughs> Look prepared at season 36. It, it's I mean, you can just you just just it's just just be amazed because it just genuinely does not make sense. But apparently kiddo is just okay with torture, but you know, whatever. So. <laughs> Bro, kiddo just yeah, it's just, bad. We have to be right. him. Sucks. Everybody's Her always just like, kiddo, shut up. You're talking too much. It's crazy. Too much, guy. Too much, kiddo. Too much. Too much. I, I can relate to that all too well, but kiddo definitely a strong candidate for this award. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Kiddo was the first pickup flashbacks had this season, and there was a good yeah. reason for that. There was a really good reason that they were that they were the first pickup for this team. It worked out in the end, Kiddo. Your best flex, or your best off tank for the for Harmony tier season nine. Let's now move over to the DPS. Starting off with hit scan DPS. Your roll stars for best hit scan DPS are. Sergeant Pepper from the Galactic Penguins, Buell from Flashbacks, Kilroy from the Koala Kings, and Tilted Waffle from Geometric. And your winner for best hit skin DPS in Harmony Tier North America is Tilted Waffle from Geometric. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on the award? You know, this is another close one. Uh, there was actually multiple people who were really close on this one. Tilted Waffle, incredible, incredible hit scan player. We know they love to lock in that Widowmaker when it's being allowed by their coach. Uh, <laughs> which is rare, but, you know, there we are. But there's just so much hit scan talent right now right. in this tier. Uh, obviously, Be Well uh, is a huge part of flashback success this season, but it just doesn't stop there there's there's crazy hit scans in pretty much every single team there's there, like all eight of the nominees for this award were just insane um so this was a really close vote uh, all around but tilted waffle comes out on top so congratulations tilted waffle definitely was able to tilt the scales in their favor this season doing a lot of work mm -hmm. for geometric and helping them achieve that number two seed yes number two seed in the standings because i mean obviously not a great, not so high last season, but now being able to bring themselves up high and Delta Waffle is to thank for most of that. Let's move now over to the other DPS category, the projectile DPS side. Your roll stars for Harmony North America projectile DPS are Vex from Ace High, As Zeno from the flashbacks, Bubble Wyatt from Fahrenheit 972, and Jin from Geometric. And your winner for best projectile DPS is as Zeno from the flashbacks. Thuggington, again, somehow we've set you up with both of your teammates so far. Yeah, I feel like this is, uh, no, it's fine. You know, honestly, I probably know more about these people than anything. I know a ton about Zeno. <laughs> a lot. It's graphic, but I won't go into that now. Um, <laughs> Zeno not only is, is a very talented DPS player for our team, he's also like the vocal, like positive mental leader and when, when things go sideways, Zeno's the one there keeping it light, laughing about things when in the middle of really heated moments. Absolutely played his ass off this season. Um, a big reason why flashbacks <laughs> where they are. Love the kid. Really, really mid Sombra, though. Mid. <laughs> mid. <laughs> Sombra. Get Sombra is the picture we've chosen here for his role star pick. So. Dude plays Pharaoh. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Not wrong. Not wrong indeed. But yeah, as Zeno, definitely. Definitely living, definitely improving on performance this season, being worthy yes. of that projectile DPS role this season. True. Congratulations. Congratulations to As Zeno. Let's move over now over to the flex support role. Of course, one of the two pieces of your backline that you're required to have in every Overwatch game. Your role stars for best flex support in Harmony Tier North America are Drowsy from the Koala Kings. Thuggington from the Flashbacks, Onyx from the Galactic Penguins, and Cleary from Geometric. 
and your winner for best flex support. As much as I would like to rig it in, in Thuggington's favor, it's Onyx <laughs> from the Galactic no. Penguins. Mr. Right, Yeti, hey. your thoughts on Onyx? <laughs> I uh, thought I got robbed. Yeah, just Onyx, no way. <laughs> I got robbed. No, but it, it genuinely serious. It's it, you know, it, it in my opinions, I, I'm a personally a huge fan of Cleary. I kind of thought clearly Cleary was was going to end up winning this initially, but I mean Onyx, but the past two seasons has been incredible for Galactic Penguins. Yes. Um obviously they were an all-star last season. I believe I, I can't recall if they won this award last season or and were a roll star, just roll star last season off the top of my head. But it's well deserved for them. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, you can't argue with consistency. Like in the end, like you, you have one of the most consistent players in harmony tier sitting right in front of you, just always at the top, leading a top end team. It just kind of makes sense. And honestly, when you have some of the main tanks they've had to heal as well, very aggressive tank players, just kind of makes sense to see uh, Onyx in this spot for sure. This is 100% my pick here is Onyx mm -hmm. is incredible. Is an incredible player I look up to a lot. And the consistency season mm -hmm. over season is, is what's impressed me the most is, you know, exactly what you're getting from Onyx. You know, go, even going into Overwatch 2, same player. And that's super important. Yeah, definitely. The the best, the be the flex support category was really stacked this season. And Onyx being mm -hmm. able to come out on top definitely shows a lot. And I also can confirm Onyx was a roll star last season for best flex support. They did not win the award for best flex support, but now ah, coming thank back. You. Thank you. Now coming back with a vengeance and being able to win it out here this season. Let's move over to the final support role here that for Har for Harmony Tier NA. Your roll stars for best main support in Harmony Tier North America are Dak from Insidious, Coconut from the Flashbacks, Bubbles from the Galactic Penguins, and Wooly from Geometric. And I feel like there's a reoccurring theme here, but it is Coconut winning best main support in the tier. Thuggington, I keep coming to you whenever I talk about your teammates. Um, yeah. Uh, first off, this graphic's wrong. Kid plays Mercy. It's about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Coco is doing one of two things. He is feeding into the back line or he is enabling Zeno on Pharah. That's about all the kid does. Uh, but in all seriousness, Coconut has been really fun to play with. As he's a really great support partner. Fun fact: I am over twice the age of him, so that's me. That feels that feels great. Um, <laughs> You're old, and that's yeah, funny. <laughs> no, he's young. There's a big difference. Big difference. He's actually younger than my oldest kid. Anyway, uh, Coco's a really, really crazy, crazy player, and I'm I'm, in, I'm impressed with the maturity that he has at the age that he has. Um, he strives for perfection and I love playing with the kid and we just, we should put him on mercy more. Hmm. So just a reminder, just cause it's worth mentioning again, everybody mentioned tonight is a roll star. So you are getting a reward if you're in that top four, just to make sure that's all clear. So Correct. it's you, it's not, we're just, there's this, there's the best of a class basically. And then you get a, uh, an award as well for being a roll star. So there's, there's two separate things being awarded today. So, uh, I know somebody award, in chat, somebody in chat was like, oh, I was nominated. Well, it's not that you're nominated. You're actually a roll star by being one of these top four here. So Yeah, I don't. it was Hypno saying that they were nominated, so they were not, unfortunately, right. in the top four. But they were nominated. Oh, they but, weren't. Oh, shit. Yeah, they, okay. were, they were not in the well, top four. You know, but, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I feel actually bad about that. I, I really feel bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we love you, Hypno. <laughs> we love you. We, hope you. we hope you continue. And who knows? Maybe you'll make that roll star next season. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm dying here. Wow, that that is so terrible timing for that, by the way. Oh wow. My oh my god. I am sorry, but regardless <laughs> of which, let's move over now to our <clears throat> most improved category here for Harmony Tier and A, as long as my voice tries to keep uh tries to stay in my system here. Your most improved players for Harmony Tier North America are Hasdio from Insidious, Buell from the Flashbacks, Bubbles from Galactic Penguins, and Riker from Fahrenheit 972. All these players do get the award of Roll Star, but in the end, the best, the most improved player for Harmony Tier North America Season 9 is Buell from the Flashbacks. The streak has been broken. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on Buell winning this award? I, I think it's overdue. I, I think uh, Buell's been kind of just... <clears throat> 
they have not gotten really any credit this season. Like it, it's just it's kind of a shame because you look at flashbacks. Obviously, the tank line is insane. As Zeno gets a huge amount of credit uh, on that team as well. Obviously, everybody knows who Thug is, and Coconut's just a maniac, so everybody knows True. that. And if there's one quiet kind of unsung hero on flashbacks right now, it, it's Be Well. And I think a lot of people, if you look at that roster, who were really watching that game, if there's one player on that team who you would pick out is probably the most impactful in any given situation, it seems like, especially when that flex DPS, or, or especially when that DPS role can really pop off, it's been Be Well. Like, they're just always there. They're always making the clutch play. They're always getting those clutch picks when the team needs it. Yeah, they have great players at every single role. But in my opinion, if you're looking at just the probably the most outstanding player on that team right now this season, I'd personally make the argument for Bewell. And I think most improved is warranted because I think they came into the season at like 2200 roll or SR. And I mean, just the talent climb is crazy. So I got to give credit where credit's due. I think it's Bewell. Well, hands down. Be well definitely has been a good improvement for the flashbacks this season and definitely has shown a lot of improvement since Nemesis last season. And I think they were on another team back in season seven. Was that FBRD they were on? Yes, it was. It was uh, season, season, seven. season eight, they were on Nemesis. Nemesis. Season, season eight seven, Nemesis. they were on yep. Fire Breathing Rubber Duckies. So mm -hmm. they, definitely have, they definitely have worked up a lot and have definitely been deserving of this award. So congratulations, Be Well for winning best or most improved in Harmony Tier North America. Time to wrap up Harmony North America with our final category, of course. Not just about the players, it's about the staff behind it. I've said it multiple times, and that brings us to our best coach for Harmony Tier North America. Your role stars for Harmony North, Harmony North America best coach are Key Limes from Insidious, Capital from the Flashbacks, Bernie from Galactic Penguins, and Ashes from Geometric. And your best coach is an interesting one because we have a tie. Bernie from the Galactic Penguins and Capital from the Flashbacks are both your best coaches for Season 9. Thuggington, your thoughts on the best coaches? Yeah, this <laughs> one was, was kind of wild. I was pretty excited to uh, to see this happen, mainly because like I don't like to see Capital get anything positive in his life. I like to Same. see him suffer. Um, but no, I think you look at the two number one seeds – from both Orem and Indigo, mm -hmm. and it's the coaches from them. And, yep. and Bernie has done such a great job with Galactic Penguins. Capital, as much as I meme on the kid, as divisive as he is within the community, he's an amazing macro coach. The guy has a, such a high understanding of Overwatch, and he has a really good job of explaining it. Mm -hmm. Bernie's the same way. When you have high-level players, you, know, you can tell, like, hey, um, just be better, idiot. Like, that's really easy to say, um, but to explain it to gold and plat players in a way that their brains can comprehend and it catapults them to a next level, that's what it's all about. And I'm really impressed with old Bernie and Capital doing something like that. But I do want to put a caveat in this. Where's the Choi love? Well, technically, Cap didn't nominate Choi, so it's really... Blame you know, capital yeah. for that. <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, just worth mentioning, a lot of people are like, it's a tie. This is not the first time ever we've had a tie. Both these both these guys had the same uh, number of votes. They did. And they had mm -hmm. the same point total, and then they had the same first place votes as well. So because of that, tie could not be broken. Therefore, your winners is your award goes to a tie. Yeah, we. I mean, this is not the first time we've seen. We've seen a three-way tie before for this we, category. We have. It, it, it was, was either this category or best main support. Uh, it was but. this category two years ago in Transcendence tier. It was uh, the weirdest, most frightening graphic I've ever made in my life. So, <laughs> so we're we're glad that we didn't have to see an abomination like that here today. Shout out to Glitch no. for making our amazing graphics, by the way. But yes, yes, definitely. Congratulations, Bernie and Capital, and congratulations to all of the role stars and winners in Harmony North America. Now, we're moving back across the Atlantic. It's time to head back into EU for the Discord tier EU mm -hmm. role stars and winners. We're going to start off in the main tank category. Starting off there, our role stars for Discord tier EU main tank are Taikutsu from Feeders United and Cheki from Feeders Divided. And your winner for best main tank in Discord tier EU is Taikutsu from Feeders United. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on the winner for best main tank in the tier? 
Phoenix United going from Harmony tier to Discord tier this season. Uh, first off, credit for that. I mean, that that alone, you're jumping up on difficulty for sure, just because the uh, quality of teams is obviously quite different that you're going to encounter in the Discord tier. They're playing against a lot of new teams that came in this season who have all looked very good. Um, you know, when you look for a tank presence in your – or when you look for a presence on your team of leadership, you look for a presence on your team who's helping di dictate that pacing that your team – can kind of thrive on uh right. I mean, feeders united consistency over two seasons you got to give credit where credit's due and i think tech is a big reason why I, I wish i had more information to be honest I, I don't have a whole heap of information but i know the importance too of tech to that team especially because of the way that the team speaks of how important they are to them so it's worth mentioning you know that's a big big resource or a big resource for what we find is how much their team values their contribution and i feel like tech is a, a big reason why uh, we've seen such a great run here for Breeders United. Taikutsu was a favorite entering mm -hmm. through the midseason awards in terms of the best tank category for the Iris Podcast midseason awards, unofficial midseason awards, by the way. Mm -hmm. They've they've still held up in Feeders United. There's a reason that they are in the grand finals right now. Taikutsu has been leading that charge and definitely has been able to help them through that. So congratulations, Taikutsu, for winning best main tank in Discord tier EU. Now it's time to head over to the other half of the tanks, your best off tank in Discord tier U. Your roll stars for best off tank are Termi120 from Deathwatch and Chaza from Feeders Divided. Your winner of best off tank in Discord tier U is Termi120 on Deathwatch. Thuggington, your thoughts on the winner for best off tank? You know, Termi has done a really phenomenal job and is a re big reason that... Um excuse me death watch is where exactly where they are mm -hmm. um phenomenal job and, and, and you know it's it's a player that apathy talked a lot about in the last cast too is there's a reason and this was wasn't to be fair it wasn't that close of a, a vote um termy won by a pretty healthy margin yep. which which shows that the community sees exactly what what we're seeing right now and what their team sees so great mm -hmm. job to termy i think it's it's a excellent showing on a uh you know team people didn't expect a ton from so good job Termi yeah. Termi had one of the largest margins of victory in the tier, so yep. worth mm. mentioning. Uh, fantastic, a very well respected tank player, and uh, they're in the chat right now. Thanks for staying awake for us. And uh, just, uh, Termi. Actually, Termi. Termi. congratulations, Termi. congratulations on your award. Yeah, congratulations, Termi. Definitely has lived up one of the most fearful Zarya's I would say in Discord tier. You, they're yeah, usually on the will. montage every single week, showing yeah. how good their Zarya is. So it's safe to say, Termi definitely was in the running for this award and definitely was a front runner for this season so congratulations termy for winning best off tank in discord to your eu let's move over now to best hit scan dps the one the first half of the dps category your nominees for best hit scan dp or your roll stars for best hit scan dps in discord to your eu are meow from death watch and blattery from feeders united and your winner for best hit scan in the tier is Blattery from Feeders United. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on the winner of best hit scan DPS? I think it's Blattery. Blattery. I apologize. Blattery. That's okay. Is it, is it Blattery? It's, I'm not really sure, but either way, I'm going to go with Blattery. Um, again, it's just Feeders United. They, they have been so consistent this season, and part of... Part of that for me with when I look at what they're doing is just the the consistent dominant victories that they had. The only team they didn't beat this regular season was Death Watch. But right. every other match, it just kind of seemed like they were rolling over their competition. Um, the DPS line for that team between Noah and Blatery was just insane. Um, but obviously, if you look at the pop offs and uh, from this play or from Blatery, it, it it's Blatery. I mean, they, they they looked great this season. Huge shout out to Meowth, by the way. Probably the most fearsome Sombra I have seen in Tranquility in a long time at this level. Um, yeah, that's a brutal Sombra. That is a brutal Sombra uh, for Meowth. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is Blatery has been fantastic this season. So congratulations, Blatery. Run from it, fear from it. Meowth Sombra comes, but Blatery being able to take it in the end. Congratulations, Bladery, for winning Best Hit Scan DPS in Discord tier EU. Let's move over now to Projectile DPS. It's not just about the hit scan, it's about the projectiles. Your your role stars for Best Projectile DPS in Discord tier EU are Harold from Feeders Divided and Pingu from the Mythical Kitsune. And your winner for Best Projectile DPS in Discord tier EU is Pingu, is Pingu from Mythical Kitsune. Thuggington, 
Your thoughts on the winner for best projectile BPS? You know, Ping, we're talking about the Termini Award being not close. This was incredibly close. The the distance, it was a one vote between Harold, Pingu, and then we had four, like, it was one vote for the top four in between all of them. It was nuts. Um, this was one that was highly contested, but Pingu showed, you know, a lot of people predicted Mythical Kinsune to make a big wrong run, and Pingu was one of the reasons for it. Um, again, these flex support players usually play a role that people don't talk a ton about, but if you watch the matches and pay attention, these are the players that are getting those three, four man uh, alts or, or huge blades. Um, everyone's frustrated with them, like, oh my God, nerf Genji. And it's players like Pingu that are the reason for it. Hmm. So, excellent work. Yeah, Pingu definitely has done a great job being able to help Mythical Kitsune get so far in the season. So congratulations, Pingu. One of the probably one of the remaining members of Mythical Kitsune through all their roster transactions this season. So <laughs> Yes. There's a lot. <laughs> definitely definitely being able to continue the momentum definitely can help you out. So congratulations, Pingu, right. for the award. Let's move over now to Flex Support for Discord Tier U. Your role stars for Flex Support and Discord Tier U. <laughs> are Yuri from Feeders United and Jinx from Feeders Divided. And your winner for best flex support in Discord Tier U is Yuri from Feeders United. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on the winner for best flex support in the tier. What a great graphic, by the way. Except yes. the compliment glitch oh again. Fanta God. Glitch with the fantastic graphics. They're all going out on Twitter right now, by the way. So you mm -hmm. guys will be seeing those graphics. You guys, again, can share those as you feel uh, as you'd like. So, But anyways, uh, again, it, it, for me, this is but less of a testament to Yuri's play as a player because they're a great player. There's no question about it. But what stands out to me is you look at leadership leadership qualities they have mm -hmm. led this team now for two mm -hmm. seasons to a very strong and consistent performance this is a finalist in last season's harmony tier eu this is a guaranteed finalist now in our debut season in discord tier you just yep. have to credit where it's due your just is the, the 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 picture of consistency and the picture of obviously great leadership for that team so right. congratulations Ray, this is, I feel like, again, a testament to just how strong of a leader and a player you've been for this team uh, to get you guys to this point. Yuri definitely has been a strong player for Feeders United. One of the two or three remaining players from last season's runner-up team. So definitely being able to work out there for Feeders United. Congratulations, Yuri, for winning best flex support in the tier. Let's wrap up the main roles here with best main support in the tier. Your role stars for best main support in Discord tier U are Sando from Dragon's Aura and Emily from Feeders Divided. And your winner for best main support in the tier is Emily from Feeders Divided. Thuggington, your thoughts on the winner for best main support? You know, I love seeing these kind of stories. You look at where Emily locks in on the team. It's below tier level. So lock in at 2,800 and it's, it's a proof that it's not always about what SR you are. It's about the impact and the value you can add to your team. And Emily's a really, really great example of that. Um, adding value to um, to this divided team and, and showing that they absolutely belong in this tier. It's it's The, the peers have shown us that. So Emily's shown a great job. But again, f f uh, main support players usually just, just exist. And without them, the team disintegrates. Oh, Emily, great job. Emily EU, not Emily NA. Yeah, there's there's two Emily's. Different Emily's. There's two, Emil two, two Emily's. Emily's. Two Emily's. There's Emily NA, and then there's Emily EU. And Emily EU right. definitely being a linchpin for Feeder is divided this season, definitely being able to live up to the title. So congratulations, Emily, right. for winning best main support in the tier. Of course, not about the six main roles. It's also about improving your performance, whether that be through the season of Tranquility on your own personal accord or through multiple seasons of Tranquility. This is our first season of Discord Tier U, so it's mostly going to be the first two, not really over multiple seasons, unless you're on Feeders United. Your, your most improved role stars for Discord Tier EU in the season are Itachier from Dragon's Aura and Chaza from Feeders Divided. And your winner for most improved in Discord Tier EU is Chaza from Feeders Divided. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on Chaza. 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 Yeah. Chaza. What's the first thing you said? Uh, Chaza. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Okay, one more time. How, how did they do, like, what do you think overall? What would you, if you had to describe their entire season in one word, what would it be? Chaza? <sighs> Damn. Bring in, bring in the hard an analysis. Dude, today, that folks. 
I, I congrats, Chaza. Congrats, Chaza. Oh, <laughs> that was rough, dude. I didn't. I didn't that was very deep. That. I should. That was very deep. Shout out to all the people Whoa. with Pokemon translators out there, but real. But yeah, Chaza. Def, not only being the second, not only being one of the best two Pokemon in Tranquility, definitely has shown a strong performance and definitely deserving of the most improved title this season. Congratulations, Chaza, for winning Chaza. most That's improved. Fun, this is a fun word to say. It's just a fun name to say, honestly. So yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> super fun to say. Regardless of which, there's yeah, one. If more you're category. in chat right now, don't don't ping him, but go into the Discord EU if you're in chat and just type Chaza. Yeah, yeah just, just type Chaza. Good. Honestly, yeah, take a quick Chaza. break, everybody. Take a quick just, break. Yeah, I'm just take a quick break. Go, go into Discord EU. Just go right Chaza. Just just do it once. Thank you. Yep. Uh, if you don't mind, thank you. Yep, Appreciate you it, everybody. All our analysts yeah. did it, so yep. just do that in Discord yep. tier EU. Just, if just hop in line, everybody. Just just follow along. Get in the queue. Get in the queue. Thirty minutes. Thank you. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. Appreciate you. Anyway, with that with that out of the way, there's only one more category left for Discord Tier U, and that is best coach. It's not about the players on the team all the time. It is about the people behind the scenes, making sure everything is working in complete order. Your role stars for best coach in Discord Tier U are Dark Fox for Feeders United and Herman from Mythical Kitsune. And your winner for best coach in the tier is Dark Fox from Feeders United. Thuggington, your thoughts on the winner for best coach? You know, um we i think we've acted it twice now and when you have that many players succeeding on a and on a large scale level you have what best main tank best hit scan best flex support a lot of their players are really close to winning their own individual awards that comes down to coaching that comes down to correct um, um guidance towards towards success and and people like uh, like dark really do that so Wonderful job, sir. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful job indeed. Wonderful. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dark Fox, for winning best coach in Discord tier U. Definitely bringing Feeders United to where they are right now. And Feeders United obviously going to be in the finals for Discord tier EU. So it's gonna be interesting to see if Dark Fox can bring them to their first title as an organization. Now back across the pond for the final time no more no more intercontinental uh voyages we're staying in na for the rest of the broadcast and we're starting off with the best main tank in discord tier north america your main your best your eh, your role stars excuse me it takes me a bit to get this to get used to this it's only been i don't know 30 minutes since i've started your yes, best your role exactly. stars for best main tank in discord tier north america are stoicism from hammerhead sam from mi7 <clears throat> blood hungry from reminiscence and genji main from the seal team's buds i hit the wrong button ignore what you just saw because your best main tank in the tier is blood hungry from reminiscence mr yeti your thoughts on the best main tank in the tier uh nice leaks uh no but it, uh it's it you know a lot of people will probably look and say oh of course the reminiscence player well first and foremost get used to it second of all <laughs> uh you know it's tell me it's wrong like i mean if you're looking at a, again consistency blood hunger has been at the top of the game for the past year and a half you know and it's consistent he dominated not only in trank he dominated in the north american community cup as well um just what do you expect it's just blood hungry it's just it, if you're looking for a main tank to fear it's it's blood hungry it, what's what's sad is if you look at the reminiscence roster they have blood hungry and choi for their tanks and they only get to play one of them at a time and that's yeah that's crazy because they probably had two of the best tanks of the tier to begin with and then you yeah, but anyways, beyond that point, mm -hmm. uh, well deserved. It's hard to argue against it. The the blood hungry, uh, it just go just goes hard. There it is a hard. reason. There is a reason blood hungry is in our current tranquility intro, getting three with a primal rage. So mm -hmm. it's safe to say blood hungry, definitely true. definitely a strong player over there on the side of reminiscence and doing a lot for this season. Let's move over now to the other category. You talked about Choi Suwon and the fact that Reminiscence can only play one of these tanks per match. Off tank is the other match. Your best role stars for off tank. You might have gotten a glimpse of it earlier because of scuff production, but the best of role, your role stars for off tank are Sticko from the Galactic Gibbons, Iconic from Chicago Deep Dish, Choi Suwon from Reminiscence, and Ricky from the SEAL Team Spuds. Mr. Yeti already mentioned his name before. Your role star, your best off tank 
is Choi Su Wan in Discord tier, North America. Thuggington, your thoughts on Choi? You know, it's 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 fascinating. You know, you look at every great main tank player, there is a player that locks Sigma. And that's Choi Su Wan. There's one reason. It, it, I, know, I know the big thing was Rem 100% force double shield, and it's because of Choi Su Wan. There was <laughs> literally the dude would locked Sigma and ref- refused refused to switch so they had to so anyone that hated the the reminiscence double shield thing it's choice fault and if anyone says any different they're liars don't <laughs> listen to Choi. he's an idiot um <laughs> Choi choice done a really really great job and i'm really proud of kind of the success he's had and the impact he's had on that team again he's not just a he'll tell you like oh my my play percentage on devo is actually 98 percent because the kid's a super nerd but <laughs> Great job, Choi. Proud of you, buddy. Great work. John Choi. Lennon. Choi. John Lennon. Yeah. Choi's definitely been a good right. player throughout this entire season. Good player throughout Tranquility, honestly, since joining. And they definitely lived up to the title this season with getting that best off-tank role. So congratulations, Choi Su Huan, for winning best off-tank in Discord Tier North America. Now let's move over to Hitscan DPS for Discord Tier North America. Your role stars for best Hitscan DPS in the tier are Laura from MI7, Sempra from Joey Esports, Turtle VP from Redacted, and Ashes from the SEAL Team Spuds. And your winner for best hit scan in the tier goes to Laura. Mr. Yeti, is there anything that we can say about Laura that already has not been said? No. Okay. But yes, there's plenty There's <laughs> plenty to say. Honestly, Laura is... So for me, this is what it is. Laura... When you when you look at this, MI7 without Laura hasn't won. MI7 MS7 with Laura has won every game they play, other than preseason finals. Yeah. I think I've proven my point here. Yeah. Just saying, I, I, I Laura Laura's win rate is off the charts. I believe they haven't lost a map they've played in. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's it's Laura. It's just Laura. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is indeed Laura. Laura has been a strong backbone for MI7 this season and definitely has earned themselves the award for best hitscan DPS this season. Congratulations, mm-hmm. Laura, for winning best hitscan DPS in yes. the in season nine no of Discord Tier NA. Let's move over now to projectile DPS. Your roll stars for best projectile DPS in Discord tier in North America are Swifters from Adelaide Eclipse, Dax from Hammerhead, Reborn from Reminiscence, and Booncore from the SEAL Team Spuds. And your winner for best hit projectile DPS in Discord tier in North America, I am Reborn, and he is your champion for dis- for uh, for projectile DPS best in Discord tier North America. That was a lot of English I just said. That was, that was a lot that of words. words. That was bro. a lot of words. Reborn wow. wins best projectile DPS. Thuggington, your thoughts? Anywhere. Reborn here. Um, <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal DPS player. Again, this this is a player that is incredibly flexible and plays anything that's asked of them and it's really fun to watch this team kind of gel and co-co like become this big cohesive unit um and reborn the the best part about reborn i think is you always know when he's there and if he's present you know if he's back at the fight he every time he reborn here and it's it's really good it helps for comms it helps for the presence of mind that you always know when reborn's there and the beauty about reborn is he's always there for you yeah. By the way, could you stop was... making me talk about Nostalgia Org people? This is getting ridiculous. I'm trying not to, but the formula yeah, says it, so. So here's the thing. Like, everybody's – I see people in chat – or some people like, oh, my God, another Nostalgia person. They There's a reason for that, people. Like, it – and also, for the record, there were open spots on the committee. If yeah, you want to join the committee if you had if you have such strong opinions. Just saying, I knew this was going to happen, and I told people that they had no right to complain if they didn't join the committee. Yeah, the shame there wasn't an open committee to join. Or yeah, like hey, shame. You know, can, shame. People from, uh, can people from the own org vote for their own players? They could not vote for them oh, to win. Got it. Oh. So it wasn't even like flashbacks players just or like uh, nostalgia players just went in and uh, and rigged the votes for them because they can't do that. They literally couldn't do that. It's literally in the rules. So exactly. yeah, exactly. So don't come complaining to us. 
Love you. Uh, but regardless <laughs> of which, now let's move on to the next category. I had to fix something real quick, so you got to that uh, graphic went away for a little bit. That was not spoilers, thankfully. Uh, that was already an award that we revealed. Narrow winning. Yeah. Narrow. Um, narrow. Yeah. Narrow winning does anything. But yep. yeah, I, I had to change the scene because I forgot to add some winners to the EOS winners, regardless of which. Let's move over to our next category, which is best flex support in Discord tier North America. Your world stars for best flex support in Discord tier North America are Mad from the Galactic Gibbons, Rocket from MI7, Glitch from Reminiscence, and Luca from Joey Esports. Give me a second while I mash through all of these keys to try and figure out who our winner is and get the graphic up. Uh. Hold on. It's going to take me a bit. No worries. We're in Discord here. You. Does anyone um, think that MI7 looks like Minnesota? This MN. Yeah, it's kind of tripping me out a little bit. Yeah, I was like, lie. wait, Rockets from Minnesota? Good for you. Dude. Yeah, Drew. definitely. True. definitely. It, it definitely can throw you off. You know what won't throw you off? Your winner for best flex support this season is Glitch, the person who made our graphics this season. Two C's. <laughs> yes, with two C's indeed. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on Glitch winning best flex support? They are an outstanding graphic artist. Their Lucio play is sus at best. <laughs> and, and I mean, I mean sus at best. Okay. Like I, I've seen it. The, the Glajax goes hard. Okay. Like I'm <laughs> just saying the, the Glajax goes hard, but it, it's just, it's just, you know, all joking aside, glitch deserves this. And it's not close glitch for MVP. End of story. Yeah. Glitch. This has been well-deserved for, I think, a while. Has Glitch won an end-of-season award before? I don't remember. I believe they won last season. Okay. Don't quote me on that. I'd have to, I'd have to check the, I'd have to check, I'd have to check all the images, but Glitch, Glitch definitely is deserving of best flex support this season. Definitely yes. has lived up to the title and has done a lot over there for Reminiscence, and great job, Glitch. Honestly, like, well-deserved. Well-deserved, not just for the graphic work, but for the performance as well. Congratulations, yes. Glitch, for winning the award. Let's move over now to the other half of the equation, your best main support in Discord tier NA. Your roll stars for best main support in the tier are Clem from the Galactic Gibbons, Fungin from MI7, Try from Reminiscence, and Dorito from the SEAL Team Spuds. And your winner for best main support in the tier is Try from Reminiscence. Ooh. Dunkinson, do you want Mr. Yeti to take this one over, or do you... No, I got it. I'll say <laughs> nice things about Dry. Um... <laughs> no, this is this is funny. It's it's super funny that Brig is on there, because and Reminiscence in general, because Try hasn't played a lick of main support all of Stage 2, and all Glitch is, is locking is the Glucio. It's wild. But now Try has... Try has has been crazy jumping to GM, um, going bonkers on that. Try has been a really stable force on that team, and that's a team that likes to have fun. Um, I mean, people can be mad, but there's a re reason Reminiscence is number one seed. There's a reason Reminiscence is much revered. The team is very good, and... It's no fault of their own. Again, this is nominated by the committee, voted on by the committee. This team they goes They can't hard. vote for their team, their players they to win. Can't. They cannot vote everybody for else. To win. Everybody else voting. Um, right. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I am literally looking at a couple of discords that I'm in, and they're like, we should just stop and vote out all the nostalgia players. I'm like, that's not how it works. No. They couldn't even vote for themselves. Right. So exactly. I'm just saying. This is just the community reflecting the respect that they have for nostalgia is what it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. The nostalgia, hard. the nostalgia org has been one of the long standing orgs in tranquility uh, up there with the fighting potatoes. Uh, not as many consecutive seasons as the fighting potatoes, but definitely has been throughout this. Se definitely has been a mainstay mm -hmm. and they definitely have been a great home for the community and have produced a lot of great community members and a lot of great performance as well. And try no exception yep. here. There's a reason that they climbed all the way to GM this season. So, or at least that's the that's the report I heard. I'm pretty sure. But try definitely a strong strong winner here for best main support in the tier. Congratulations, try for winning best main support in Discord tier NA. Let's move over now to the next group, which is Discord tier NA's most improved player award. Again, it's not just about the specific roles. It's about how many players can improve based on this season of Tranquility, about their lifetime, or through multiple seasons of Tranquility. 
which I feel like is the case for all of these players on the most improved award. Because we've seen all of these players in past seasons, and they've all shown up to massive expectations this season. Your roll stars for most improved in Discord tier North America are Null from Chicago Deep Dish, Turtle from Redacted, Try from Reminiscent, and Toxic from the SEAL Team Spuds. And your winner for most improved in Discord tier North America is Toxic Blade 47 from the SEAL Team Spuds. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on Toxic winning most improved in the tier? <laughs> Oh God! I want be to, nice. I, I, be I'm, nice. I am trying so hard. <laughs> Everybody, please type "Toxic Blade 47" is bad in chat right now, please. Anyways, uh, but no. In in all seriousness, um, it, okay. Toxic. Toxic has put in a grind to get to where he is. He went from two seasons ago being why is it somber because, we, <laughs> because I picked it. Deal with it. Um, so, <laughs> so toxic two seasons ago was a off tank, a good off tank, but a, an off tank nonetheless in Discord tier. Uh, last season they moved over to the DPS role, started grinding with Big Bang Buccaneers, became one of the top DPS last season in the Harmony tier. They move up to Discord tier now this season. They've been continuing to grind this game and continuing to try to get better. They've stepped up in so many different ways. It's just well-deserved. Uh, when you look at people who play that most improved role, you look at people who are just absolute grinders, uh, and Toxic is just that. They've been consistently grinding to get better at this game. He's at Masters recently on DPS. It's just well-deserved. It's just well-deserved uh, for all the work he's put in. He's put in uh, an extensive amount of time uh, in the lab just working with his coach Smugs on it and uh, just kind of getting up to where he is now. So congratulations, Toxic. It's well-deserved. Definitely well deserved. Definitely has transcended from the, uh, from the area of, uh, what is it? From the era of uh, Toxic Blade Forty Seven is bad. So congratulations to Toxic for winning that award here. There's only one more award left in Discord tier North America, and that is the award for best coach. Of course, it's not just about the players; it's about the people on the staff. I've said this already three times before. But the message still remains true throughout all of it. Your uh, nominees for, or your roll stars for best coach in the tier, if I can remember to actually click the right sources. There we go. Your best, your best coach nominee, or your best coach roll stars are Don Cheadle from the Galactic Gimmons, the Mormon 27 from Redacted, per Pete. Per Poggers from Reminiscence. Poggers. Poggers, otherwise known as Speedy666 from Reminiscence. And Smuggers. For, uh, Smugs. Smuggers. That's going to be a meme on Twitter. I bet. Smugs uh... from the SEAL Team Spots. I apologize, Smugs. I'll make it up to you. You're the winner for best coach in Discord tier North America. Thuggington, your thought on Smugs winning best coach? First off, people describing Smuggers, it's Smuggers with a Z. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Toxic getting to where he is, is it, like Yeti alluded to it, is because of Smugs. Smugs um, has been around since season three. Yeah. Two. Forever. Season two. Season two. 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 Season two oh. MVP. Right. Season two. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, my God. Yep. That otaku vibe. <laughs> yep. Um, Smugs. <laughs> Smugs has done a lot for this community, done a lot for uh, a lot of people and a lot of teams. Um, really good reference for how to how to succeed at Overwatch, how to be good at life. Um, Smugs is one of my favorite people. Uh, really good job. Really proud of what you've done for those those starchy boys, um, and really proud of what you've done as a person and a and a uh, Overwatch player. So, big up, buddy. Great job. Well deserved. Keep it up. Smugs has definitely been a linchpin for SEAL Team Spud's success, especially as of late, being able to recover after a pretty average Stage 1, being able to bring themselves into Stage 2 here. So congratulations, Smugs. I do I do want to put real real quick one more thing. Sure thing. I'm super happy that Smugs has survived BethCon 2 suggestion. Smugs one time got really – wasn't feeling good. Beth suggested that oh, he drink no. bleach. And oh, no. I'm super happy he didn't do that because <sighs> – I don't know if, if the world would be the same. So, also, don't listen to Beth. Just don't listen to the certified doctor in the admin team. No, 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 no. <laughs> Beth gives bad advice. Ask Smugs. 
Okay, good. Good to know. Don't don't give don't give advice. Don't take advice from her. Regardless of which, congratulations, Smugs, and congratulations to all of our Discord tier North American Roll Stars and award winners. You'll be seeing those posts come up on Twitter probably very soon. The, the Twitter's on Discord tier U, which means we got to start speeding up before they ca- yeah. before the posts get uh, overlap. We got to catch up. We got to catch up. Let's get into it. Roll Stars for or moving on to Transcendence tier, starting off with the Roll Stars for best main tank. Your role stars for best main tank in Transcendence tier are Tyler from the Guangzhou Gangsters, Andy GDH from Decapitators, and Samir from the Devil Dukes. And your winner for best main tank in the tier is Tyler from the Guangzhou Gangsters. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on the winner for best main tank? I mean, it, it has to be. I, if, if you look at, you know, a, a lot of people, like Andy's got an incredible reputation right now, but Andy really isn't playing much. Because uh, they have PDK playing the role right now, which they should, because off tanks are just where it should be right now. Uh, it, it, you know, Andy wrists is, or I'm sorry, Andy has broken wrists too. Tyler is just insane though. If you, Guangzhou Gangsters has always been about that rush play style. They've always been about that fast pace, in your face play style. Tyler this season has just been upholding that kind of mantra for that team and just absolutely in your face aggressive play style for a main tank absolutely dominant at so many juncture or juncture points throughout the season. I mean, if you look at it, Guangzhou Gangsters has basically an unblemished record other than losing to a couple of top end teams, but they have been utterly dominant against everybody else. Um, it's an incredible team and you got to start up front. It's just Tyler is incredible. So congratulations to Tyler. Tyler definitely has been a strong force for Guangzhou Gangsters this season. Definitely living up to the title of best main tank here. Congratulations, Tyler, for winning best main tank in the tier. Let's move over now to best off tank in the tier. Again, it's not just about the main tank. It's always about that off tank helping you out in uh, with the main tank or playing Zarya for most of the time. Your nominees for, or your role stars for best off tank in transcendence tier are Cam from the Guangzhou Gangsters, PDK from the Capitators, which Mr. Yeti talked about earlier, and Greninja from Amnesia. And your winner for best off tank in transcendence tier, again, Mr. Yeti mentioned it, it's PDK. It's PDK, it's PDK. Thuggington, your thoughts on PDK. My thoughts on PDK. Uh, oh, uh, PDK. <laughs> I remember way back when, season three, this little squeaky voiced young man comes, uh, hey, can I try out for DDoS? Kid locks the J silly, and he has never looked back. Uh, <laughs> it's really... <laughs> Dude... The, the PDK stories I have for you are something else. Decapitators are somebody, are a team that that are extremely successful. And again, that's a lot of it's off tank. It's 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 tank. It's just tank play in general. And especially going into Overwatch 2, you know, PDK has proven to be a very flexible player um, overall throughout Overwatch, um, going into management, anything like that. Great job, PDK. I'm very proud of you. And if anybody would like to have any videos of PDK pre-puberty, let me know. I have a lot of links. Definitely. Well, definitely PDK has grown throughout Tranquility and definitely definitely deserving of the best off-tank award. Definitely has been a... <laughs> speaking, been a strong... speaking of player growth from my Harmony Tier Junkrat 1 trick, by the way. Seriously. Uh... Yeah. Literally Jay Silly. <laughs> That's it. To like a top 100 DPS player, just saying. Yeah, yeah, that is okay. Definitely okay. has definitely has Proud built up. Definitely has built themselves up. Congrats, and PDK. Definitely living up. Not just not just good in the predictions, good in game as well. As we true. Here today. But congratulations, PDK, for winning best off tank in transcendence tier. Now let's move on to best hit scan DPS in transcendence tier. Your your role stars for best hit scan DPS in the tier are Frozen from the Guangzhou Gangsters, Pyro from Decapitators, and Akua from Amnesia. And your winner for best hit scan in the tier is Pyro from the Decapitators. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on Pyro winning best hit scan? You know, I was actually a little surprised that Pyro ended up coming out on top on this one. I I had all of my chips on Frozen here, um, 
but you know it was a really close vote uh the vote was just a couple points separating the two uh it, it they're basically the 1a and 1b of the tier if i could have given a joint award here i would have but that would have been cheating um you know mm. I, in the end i i think pyro has looked fantastic this season um kind of stepping in now back on the main role on that dps role for the decapitators um you know and one of the biggest things is obviously playing that sojourn uh is so critical right now in this current meta and their sojourn has been absolutely dominant and we've seen it time and time again beating top end teams in yep. uh you know this last week uh taking out uh amnesia in a pretty convincing win and right. a big part of that pyro just looks insane on the sojourn it's just a, a dominant pick and real hero um it, it just it's impressive yeah the sojourn is unfortunately a very real hero right now real in hero. this game it's a real hero it's a good thing they're nerfing her right yeah gotta love those nerfs that they're giving the sojourn gotta yeah, definitely love the, definitely the sojourn nerfs that they're definitely putting in tomorrow right definitely yeah no? definitely, okay definitely, all right definitely. just checking uh, i hate comp anyway uh <laughs> Yeah, Pyro's definitely been a strong force for Decapitators this season. Definitely a good pickup after winning the championship with Cosmic Castle. Or no, they weren't didn't win the Cos the championship, did they? Am I am I mixing up Pyro or was was Pyro on that championship winning Cosmic Castleways roster? Or were they on a different team? A well, either way. Yesterday. Either way. <laughs> Fair enough. Either way, uh, Pyro's been a definitely strong force this season. Definitely being able to live up to the name and winning best hits can here. Definitely a strong uh, pick. <laughs> choice Juan is saying that Pyro was on flex support last season for on choice. Cosmic Castaways, so that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah definitely, sense. definitely has been showing, definitely has been showing a lot of strong uh, work here uh, in the season. So, congratulations, Pyro, for winning best hits can in the tier. Now it's time to move on to best projectile DPS in Transcendence tier. Your role stars for best projectile DPS in the tier are Haru Hero from the Guangzhou Gangsters, Aura from Decapitators, and Lars from Frost Fisher. And guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody else in between, it's time. Your winner for best projectile DPS is Haru Hero deserving in my opinion thuggington yeah your thoughts on haru hero when yeah he again haru hero is you know i feel like that guangzhou gangster's play style is because of haru hero and the pace that haru hero wanted to play is the pace that guangzhou gangsters played at kind of gnarly um really 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 great player um kind of the one of those the 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 center of this this pinwheel that is Guangzhou Gangsters with Haru Hero. And yeah, big, big the, the, this team had a good success. The band character player, by the way. Band <laughs> character player. Or May, May player. I, I will say this. Haru Hero was like the one player from Guangzhou last season to really not get any credit mm. uh, right? for the Guangzhou's run last season. Uh, totally unwarranted. Totally undeserved. Inc incredible player. Um, and everybody on that team was basically like, why aren't you talking about Haruhiro? Haruhiro practically carries us. Why aren't you talking about this? You know, and it's just like, no, but Cam. But they're like, no, screw Cam. Cam sucks. You should talk <laughs> about Haruhiro. And I, yeah. I agree. After seeing this season, I mean, Haruhiro is, is cracked as can be. And it's well-deserved. And Cam, yeah, Cam is is old and bad. Yeah. So. There you go. But yeah, Haruhiro definitely... Definitely a strong force. Long overdue. This award is long overdue for Haru Hero. Definitely has been a strong uh, force to be reckoned with here in in Transcendence here, and well deserving of that award. Just quick, I see someone mentioning that they miss that if they asked him if you did, miss Discord here on A. Unfortunately, you did. But if you check our Twitter at Trank TV, you'll be able to see the awards as they're coming in. A few every few minutes, you'll be seeing the awards come in, so you can see who won best role. Star you can see who won role stars and best in the tier for Discord here in North America for each role, so you don't have to worry about having to watch the VOD. Make, we make your life easier because... It's true, it's true. It's we don't job. want you to watch our content. You could just go on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, you could watch Wait. our content. That would be very appreciated. Yeah, you should watch. You should watch, actually. I'm sorry. You should watch. You can build um, up those points to get giveaway yeah. entries for shop.spreadshirt.com slash tranquility GG shirts. But yeah, that's, besides, big. that's besides the point. But now, let's... <clears throat> let's move over now to... <clears throat> <laughs> I shouldn't talk unless I've gotten it cleared. Thank you, Bo thank you, Throat, for giving up on me after 11 days. Let's move over now to best flex support in Transcendence tier. Your role stars for best flex support in the tier are True Donger from the Guangzhou Gangsters, Sir Olin from Reckless Sigma, and Capital from Amnesia. And your winner for best flex support in the tier 
It's capital from Amnesia. Mr. Yeti, your thoughts on the best flex support winner? Oh, God, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't. Look, look, okay. We can talk about the memes. We can talk about divisiveness. We can talk mm. about whatever. There's a lot of things you can talk about with Gap. There's no doubt about it. And some of it warranted, absolutely. Some of it unwarranted, absolutely. Some of the hate he gets warranted, absolutely not. The fact of the matter is, is this kid has, and I say kid in the nice way because he's not a kid. Um, everybody's a kid to me. I'm 34 years old. Uh, what wow. it comes down to is this. You look at a person who started off on extremely bad terms with the community, came in and built an organization from the ground up in nostalgia and while doing that has been consistently at the very tip top of player performance every season they played in every role they've played yep you can make the jokes you can rip on them all you want but in the end it's just deserved this award is deserved end of story well said yeah capital Definitely has had. I need to say I can't say any bad things about Capital because a uh, he's a train ride away from me, and b uh, he definitely has had a really strong season this year with Amnesia. Amnesia have looked like a better force, and Capital has been the leading force behind that. Also, again, as you mentioned, the manager of Reminiscence, the manager of Flashbacks, has had a lot of a lot of help making sure those organizations could continue in tranquility and help provide a lot for the community. So, Capital. A well-deserved award for winning Best Flex Support in Transcendence here. Congratulations, Capital. Let's move over to the final main category award in Transcendence tier, the main support. Your role stars for Best Main Support in Transcendence tier are Slimo from the Guangzhou Gangsters, Cry from Decapitators, and LCS from Amnesia. And your winner for Best Main Support in the tier is LCS from Amnesia. Thuggington, I see you shaking your head. Do you want to comment? The Chilean warlord himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just running roughshod uh. on transcendence tier. Um now nah, this is uh this is a big this is a big back line. I think it's um there's a reason reminiscence has been successful to a to a degree, and it's it's this back line. And LCS has done a really, really great job of of learning a lot of things, playing on that ping. Um <laughs> repping repping chile it's it's nuts dude kids crazy um someone please link um telling us this to shut up because that is my favorite gif that of all time favorite gif <laughs> favorite gif it's yes, so LCS. funny it's so funny <laughs> oh lcs lose let's go but posting that link will drastically affect fishing season thug it's true. That's, i'm sorry good point my bad <laughs> it's true my but bad. yeah lcs God. i i i do hate when lcs wins yeah we sometimes we hate literally it, all my homies do <laughs> at the same time i like lcs being this good in transcendence tier i'm starting to really fear when lcs hits the lan in the future what the heck is he gonna be like if he's this good in transcendence tier right the now land and peen? the land in fucking chile or any land in general like <laughs> i'm i'm just scared you know, what happens when lcs is not on ping like that's True. that's going to scare me. What will that's happen true. when LCS is not on ping? If right. they are already doing this well on ping in transcendence right. tier. Right. Real, real, like, real, real, real. Too real. Sca it's scaring me. It is scaring me, honestly, seeing L <laughs> LCS do this well. But congratulations, LCS, for winning best main support. Now there's only two awards left, and though one the first one of those is most improved in the tier. Of course, based off other seasons, this season, overall career, etc. Your candidates for most improved, in or your role stars for most improved in Transcendence tier are Ice Spirit from the Krabby Crabbers, Tutty from Frostfisher, and LCS from Amnesia again. And I say again because your winner for most improved in Transcendence tier is once again no, LCS. No, no, I hate to say no, it. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Viva Chile. Viva Chile. Viva That's Chile. all I'm saying. Viva I'm leaving Chile. it at that. We've complimented him enough. Please stop. All right. Last, Please last stop. thing we want is to boost his ego before. Um... No. It's... Hey, jokes aside, 
Well deserved. Yeah. He did, it's well deserved. Very well deserved. We've already talked no so much question. about LCS. I don't think we need to talk about them no. anymore. Or else, God no. Or else God, we're gonna no. need to start coming up with just, different facts. But just yeah, <laughs> you just stop. We're yeah. done. We're we're <laughs> sorry, LCS. We respect you. Congratulations on your two awards. I think being the only other person outside of Capital winning two awards this season, right, Yeti? It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yep. So yep. there you go. Being able to and one of Capitals is really just Choi's award. So you're not wrong. <laughs> Honestly, but yeah, he's, like, he's accepting on Choi's behalf. Yeah, pretty much, but definitely well deserved. Now it's time for our final category of the main tiers, and that is the Transcendence tier best coach. Again, the people behind the scenes are always the ones helping out and being able to make sure everything is staying intact for each of these teams. Your role starts for best coach in Transcendence tier. I already see one of them being mentioned in the chat. Mar from Decapitators, Mick Jr. from Reckless Sigma, and Darkrai from Amnesia. And your winner for best coach in the tier is Darkrai from Amnesia. Thuggington, your thoughts on Darkrai? Yeah, I'm actually, um, again, once again, I'm talking about freaking nostalgia or Darkrai or Duck has been pivotal to not only reminiscences, uh, sorry, Amnesia's success, but trickle on effect through both other teams too it's when you have coaching of this caliber and this this high level um it it trickles down it trickles down to the rest of the team it trickles down to you know everyone just kind of absorbing that knowledge and you look at organizations like nostalgia that that look from a collaborative standpoint that all these teams are intermixed together and they all share information and share things like that it's it's pretty incredible and and duck has or Zach Rye has been a really awesome part of the of the organization from from day one. So, yeah, big absolutely. awesome job. Absolutely, well deserved. Trickle down economics. Well, Abbott, well, you're right. Well, well deserved indeed. There is nothing like a coach that will come into your roster and help fill in a hole that you're missing in the tank role. And then right. when, when Overwatch Two comes and there's only one tank, help out in the coaching staff as well. Like, there's right. only one other coach I would say that filled that role, and that was seen on the Arctic Foxes. Darkrai being able to do that for Amnesia, which is a which is much better than Arctic Foxes this season, is actually right. pretty crazy. So, Darkrai yeah. definitely living up to the best coach title, and you love to see a player that's willing to commit to a team that much. Congratulations, Dark Darkrai, for winning best coach in Transcendence tier. And that is all of our awards for the main tiers. However... We still have two other awards to go over. Of course, it's not just about the players. It's not just about the teams. It's about the people helping our community, be it through mm -hmm. helping out through other sort of staff means or being a part of our massive production staff that tries every week to bring you high-quality broadcasts in the Tranquility community. Our first award category is for the best casters. Of course, we have multiple different casters funneling through our system every single right. season. Many of these casters have gone on to do impressive things, including Dor, who is currently casting Overwatch contenders and is a, probably a frontrunner to make Overwatch League soon. So Dor has been a very good example of a player who's come into Tranquility as a caster and has built themselves up through Tranquility as a result. These cast, these four casters in the Roll Star category and our winner for best caster have all been proven to be really good casters throughout the entirety of the Tranquility community. Have brought us very entertaining casts and have brought us a lot of amazing cast throughout their time in tranquility in season nine your role stars i'm gonna call it or your top four for best casters in the in tranquility season nine are myself geo bethcon and toasty all four of these casters have done so much they've been really good overall throughout the entire season but there has to be one taking the award for best caster and i hate to give it to, i hate i hate to do it because I, I really hate to do it because I don't like your winner, my everybody. I is, don't like tooting my own horn. Your but winner, yes. everybody, is Bowsy. Congratulations, Bowsy. Yeah. Taking the best caster this season. That's two in a row. Yeah. Two in a row for Bowsy. Yeah. Two in a it row, Bowsy. Yeah. Dynasty. Right. The casting dynasty, dynasty. that is Bowsy W. Bowsy O W, which isn't what you go by at all, but still. No, it isn't. Um, <laughs> HB64. Yeah, HB Bowsy64. Uh, you know, I think hey. Bowsy yeah. has, has in, and I think all of our casters, it's, it's what sets tranquility apart from a lot of other amateur 
Overwatch communities and gaming communities is the production level that we bring forth. And mm -hmm. it's the casting talent that really does. It brings these matches to life. Yes. You know, it's one thing just to watch it, but it's these casters. And Bowser is a great example of somebody that brings these matches to life and explains, mm -hmm. you know, it really pulls you in and draws you into people that maybe you don't know a ton about, but you're invested in these matches yes. because our casting team, Bowsy being one of the best ones that we've ever produced to to put it forward so thank you Bowsy, from you know an admin standpoint it's people like you and it's people like the rest of these casters that take tranquility from just this like tournament to like oh damn this is this is this is legit mm. so thank you yeah i i strive a lot to be a good caster and i'm glad i know that for two seasons now i have made an impact in the casting community here in tranquility and have helped help breathe life into the casting role being able to bring that to being able to bring my expertise i definitely i don't know how long i'll be able to stay in tranquility i don't know how long i'm going to be continuing here but all i know is that i need to i'm going to say thanks for thanks for thanks for having me be best caster two seasons in a row uh, i think everybody everybody on this list of best casters all were deserving i think all of them could any of them could have won this award but i'm honored that i was the one winning it out in the end I, I agree. Yeah, I I don't like tooting my own horn. I don't like saying like, <laughs> "Hey, I'm the winner." Hey, it's it's rigged. It's not rigged. But like, you know, it, it it is nice to know that you know all this hard work is going is going to a good cause. So thank you all. But that's not the only award that we have to give out for helping out our community. Of course, it's not just about the casters. There's a lot of other people behind the scenes. Whether that be helping us with our productions, helping mm -hmm. helping us with our pot, helping us with you know, anything that we may need to do in terms of event week or videos or editing or whatever. They could be as big as hosting a podcast or as simple as making a Google sheet uh, regarding like team transfers or players or standings or whatever. There are people of this community that are not part of the staff, but are willing to do the effort that it takes to be a staff member behind the scenes, helping out through all those sort of interactions. This fills into our category for best non-staff community contributor. All four of these finalists have done a lot for our community this season. Of course, there were 10 nominees for this category. We narrowed it down to four, and those four are the following. Your top four for non-staff community contributor are Dan, who has been helping a lot for our productions throughout this mm -hmm. season. Hippie can be the same, has been helping out a lot with our productions and a lot of the multi-observer productions you see Hippie is behind the wheel of. Finney, who took up production and observing this season to help out with a lot of production. And then you have the lone nerf there, not in terms of production, but actually has been helping a little bit in terms of production, but has also been the host of Predicting Tranquility this season, taking the reins from yours truly that season. And that mm -hmm. is why I am happy to announce that your non-staff, your best non-staff con community contributor for season nine is nerfed. Congratulations, nerfed, for winning non-staff community contributor. They have done so much this season, taking up Predicting Tranquility, working on a lot of projects to help make Tranquility a welcoming community for all. Nerf says it's because they predicted Doodles. I wouldn't say that, but... No, regardless. no, that actually took away votes. Um, <laughs> I, I, I will just step in really quick here. Nerf has been incredible since they've been a part of the community uh this season they took the reins on so many projects they took the reins on uh obviously predicting tranquility and have done right. fantastic all season this is on top of managing several teams of their own and on top of this running their own tranquility related broadcast or podcast on the side of tranquility you know that it says it all like it's just the the work ethic from nerf is crazy the willingness to devote time and dedication to the community uh is incredible and i know all of us on the staff absolutely love and appreciate everything uh that nerf is doing for the community um it makes the community a better place when anybody and everybody contributes and this goes to all the people who were on this whole list you know it's not just the, even those top four it's everybody 
but those four, I mean, Dan, uh, Laggy said it in chat. Dan has been huge for us this season. We literally would probably not have EU broadcasts if it wasn't for oh, Dan. No. Dan, Dan did so many EU broadcasts this season. Hippie stepped in and has been huge, helping to continue to progress our technology from a production side and has picked up so many multi-observer games, has right. been huge in training new observers as well. Um Phineas stepped into observing this season for the first time in production has taken on, I think almost a dozen broadcasts for us this season and has just been incredible in all of those broadcasts as well. So, um, you know, nothing or not, there, there's not enough to be said, or there's not enough time to sit here and thank every single person who's contributed right. to tranquility, but That's like it. it's those four have been insane. But especially congratulations to nerf. Uh, it's well-deserved, uh, for you to uh, take home this award this season you know these ones this non-staff contributor and the caster ones it feels so weird to like predict like give a winner obviously this person right. that wins does, right. goes above and beyond but these all of these people are the unsung heroes of tranquility right. you know the orange names and the green names all have this like buff to them because we have different color names and everyone looks at us differently but it's these people that no one sees and no one thinks about no one talks about that really are the the engine of this community so can't say enough about them i, I absolutely love these awards yeah the the non-staff contributor award definitely is the one that i think is better than the casting award because it shows how much people are willing to commit to our community you know we probably wouldn't be here for Thankless. nine seasons if it weren't for people helping out in the non-staff roles so yes it's it's thanks to those people that are helping us continue progressing as an amateur tournament growing to other games being able to help out in many different ways and nerfed has been a part of that this season has been a big right. positive influence for all of us here so congratulations nerf congratulations to everybody who was a roll star or a winner for mm -hmm. an end of season award congratulations to everybody here from the bottom of tranquility gaming we thank you all for your participation this season and again congratulations but that is it. That is every end of season awards category done. Before we Dang, wrap up, that's a lot. That was a lot. That was two that hours was a lot. worth of content. It was a big content. That I, we, we technically still have a little bit more. Bro, bro, what's crazy is like we're like, okay, Yeti's yeah, like, okay, thug, let's do this thing. That's um, true. Let's come into it. And I'm over here like, whoa. Damn, that's a big that's a big that's gift. A random twenty anonymous <laughs> gifts. Hello. Yeah, a lot of people a lot of people are giving out gifts. Dang. Oh my God. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Anonymous Anonymous, for uh for giving me for giving out those gift subs to people in chat. But Yeah, damn. That's yeah, big. Definitely big. Nice job. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I was saying it's like pick the two old guys in the community that's like way past our bedtime. <laughs> what is this? What is this guy? Yeah. Snarly. But yeah, definitely, definitely, it's it's fun to go through all of these awards. Before we wrap yes. up the show, we have to show one extra video before we log off for the night, and that is our comms check. This one was edited by Phoenix. Thank you, Phoenix, for editing this week's comms check. <laughs> wrong video. Hold on, that's the wrong video. Guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to set the video to the right thing. I am totally, totally prepared. This was totally not a mistake. I don't know what you're talking about. There we go. Now the actual comms check. <laughs> Almost there. Nice. Hi, Why are you meowing at me? What's wrong? <laughs> okay. Oh. 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 Care. Let's never. Y'all are funny. Oh, oh, come on! No, I was okay. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all are just funny. Right. We bit out a. Uh, oh, uh, what? It is not me. I am. <laughs> 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 no, oh, man. No. Oh. Someone's coming to point. So it's your turn. Yes. Nice. Let's go. Yes. Oh. The curse is broken! The curse is broken! Holy hell. I don't know what Y'all gave me a heart attack. The Dorito and I have both have- Hey, I should Twitter! 
Hi Ash's Twitter. Hi Ash's Twitter. Hi Ash's Twitter. Twitter. He got very mad at us when we didn't say it last week. <laughs> Make it a meme. I'm feeling feisty tonight, so if you yeah. to screw you all that in the chat, just <laughs> pay zero attention to it. You know, we kind of did that last time in playoffs and that didn't work. Um, okay. <laughs> That's how I feel about that one. Nobody oh, wait. We care too much about the game. I'm eating a tostada. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. You're eating a I what? Fucking better. Wait, Ryan. 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 Robin. Ray tamales? Uh, I mean, personally, los verdes me gustan más que los rojos, pero. Oh, like, I don't know what you're saying! <laughs> Look, it's ashes. That's awesome. Ashes, ashes, I'm gonna kiss you. You did so well. Yeah. Hi, ashes. Oh, I just have to. Bro, Antonio is a drain gang fan. Give me everything tonight. Give me everything tonight. Give it tonight. I'll get tomorrow. Tomorrow. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you, Phoenix, for editing this week's comms check. Now it's time to move over to our final segment where we look at the matches to watch this week. Of course, it's the third week of playoffs, which means some team, most teams this week are getting eliminated. So it's their final stretch for glory in tranquility. Thuggington, what match are you looking forward to this week in tranquility? Um, I have Death Cards Arctic Foxes matches. I want to see. I, I think Death Cards is going to take this one. Um, I, I believe in this team, and they're going to. It's the Cinderella story. The Cinderella story of Death Cards. Let's see it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if Death Cards are able to pull off the battalion from last season. Mr. Yeti, what's your match that you're watching this week? Uh, for me, it's Adelaide Eclipse taking on Chicago Deep Dish. Adelaide right now is starting to peak. Deep Dish looks like they are starting to melt, which is kind of a, a good thing about pizza. So really, maybe this is the best acronym for it. But uh, the question is, is this Deep Dish really pizza? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Mm. Uh, but in the end, uh, what my point is, is that I'm more of a New York guy uh, <laughs> when it comes to pizza. And uh, also, that said, I predict Adelaide winning this one three to one. We'll see if Chicago Deep Dish overcook themselves and get killed out by the Eclipse in that match. My match I'm watching uh, is in the Harmony tier. I'm choosing Ragnarok Freya versus EX Kusanagi. We've seen an amazing lower bracket run thus far from Ragnarok Freya and EX Kusanagi have not been that strong so far, unfortunately. Losing last week to Fahrenheit 972, not having a great stage number two. I think that there's a potential for Freya to... Or, uh, yeah, this is the potential for Freya to jump on that and being able to take a victory over EX Kusanagi and move themselves into a chance for that championship bracket. I have a 3-2 to two win for Ragnarok Freya in that match. Uh, last A uh, couple things before we go out. I see my analyst typing in the outline, and it's making me go crazy. Uh, th I'm glad you guys don't see that behind the scenes. <laughs> Yeti and I are just talking to each other. <laughs> they pretty <laughs> much are. Recording. And now they're spamming hi Bowsy. Uh right underneath, right on top of where we get where I get to talk about our programs for this week. Our feature matches. We have several planned this week in Harmony North America. We have Ace High versus the Big Bang Buccaneers at nice. 8 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Transcendent Tier of Death Cards versus Arctic Foxes, same time, same place. On dis on Thursday, Discord Tier EU will have the semifinal match between Death Watch and Mythical Kitsune taking place at uh, two thirty Eastern Standard Time, eight thirty Central European Time, and later that day at nine at eight thirty Eastern Standard Time is the Cosmic Castaways versus the SEAL Team Spuds. Now, you may be wondering, where's the Harmony EU match? Well, if you didn't watch the beginning of the broadcast, I'm happy to say that the Harmony EU finals will be next Tuesday, November 22nd, Acer versus Brig Divers, facing off at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Any sort of information about these broadcasts, if they were to change, can be available on our website, tranquility.gg. So make sure you check that to see all the latest news about our broadcasts and whatnot. Uh, well, as well, another program happening next week is our Widowmaker 1v1 tournament currently scheduled for November 
20th. So if you want to see some Widowmakers clicking heads on that Sunday, make sure you tune in on November 20th for our Widowmaker 1v1 tournament. There will not be an Iris podcast next week as it is Thanksgiving week. And here at Tranquility, most of us are North American staff. So we are going to be taking that week off for regular schedule matches. Of course, we are having the paid Harmonia holiday. Match. Paid holiday. You're welcome. Paid holiday. Paid, paid holiday. You all, get a, you all get a break for one week. But we'll be taking a break mostly apart from that Harmony EU match and any other matches that we will be announcing and that leads us to our final thing, which is our giveaway winner for the week. Can I get a random number generator, please, for giveaway winner? Yes, you can. Thank you very much, Lucky Tin. The winner of the giveaway is our best non-staff community contributor, Nerfed. Congratulations, Nerf, for winning a free t-shirt from the Tranquility Store at shop.spreadshirt.com slash tranquilitygg. Keep in mind, you don't have to just win the giveaway in order to get a shirt. You can also go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash tranquilitygg and get your own store. Exclamation point store in the chat. Here, I'll even type it for you. There you go. Exclamation point store. Head over to that link and you can go buy any shirts you want. Not You don't have to just win them here on the podcast. But that is it. It has been a fun podcast here with the two original Iris podcast hosts overall. And it's just been a great, great night. Uh, giving away some end of season awards to those that deserved it most. But that is it for our broadcast here tonight. For Mr. Yeti, for Thuggington and Mr. Yeti, we thank you all for gazing into the iris with us. My name has been Bowsy. Until we meet again, we hope you have an amazing night and enjoy your week in Tranquility Gaming. Experience Tranquility. Pass into the iris.